market trying to get back to the upside here this morning as we get going on a Tuesday ahead of uh, important inflation data coming out uh, in the next two days. In fact, CPI and PPI over the next two mornings at this time. Make sure you're with us for that. Uh, we'll bring it to you uh, as it comes out in the meantime. Coming off a uh, very, very tight range yesterday for both the NASDAQ and the uh, S&P 500. It was all about uh, small caps, ton of little ones flying around all day yesterday. We'll touch on a few of those. There are a few more moving around this morning. VVOS, one of those. Uh, TSM back to the upside a little bit here this morning. We'll touch on uh, a little bit in the chip sector as well. When it comes to AI, there's a couple of headlines regarding uh, Google this morning as well and Broadcom. Uh, as well teaming up together on uh, some new initiatives. So uh, we'll have a look at Google looking a little bit strong today. NIO back to the upside as well. Uh, XPeng, some of the Chinese ADRs moving around here to start things off. It's Tuesday, April 9th, 2024. TraderTV.Live starts now. Yeah, I zoomed out a little bit here on a 15 minute chart. That right there was yesterday. So it gives you a little bit of context of uh, a very, very tight range as I was mentioning, but we're right back at the top end of that range yesterday, uh, right here, right now in the pre-market. Yeah, we had yields back downside in a pretty big way this morning, dollar coming off a little bit, uh, golden oil back higher across the board to start things off. So a bit of a wait and see here, I think ahead of a uh, pretty crucial print coming up tomorrow. Uh, PPI Thursday, but it's not necessarily going to be as important uh, as what we get tomorrow. Yeah, you and I were just talking about uh, off camera about trying to trade it during these consolidative times when the market is waiting for uh, that print. So we'll have to see what the rest of the day brings. Microsoft also coming in with an interesting headline here, looking to invest heavily in Japan uh, and AI as well. Tilray reporting earnings and uh, they didn't do that well with respect to their cannabis, but they did better with alcohol. Go figure. So yeah. lots to talk about. Shocking. Yeah. Uh, yeah, we'll uh, touch on Tilray. I'm sure there's been so much focus on uh, cannabis uh, over the past couple of weeks weeks here heading towards the uh, election, of course, coming up in November as well. Uh, we touched on it with uh, Raheem back on Thursday, and we were talking specifically about that Florida initiative that is going to be on the ballot, uh, legalization going to be on the ballot in uh, Florida coming up in November. Um, all right, Neil, I want a full review here. Uh, give me your thoughts on uh, the newly revised Rogers Center last night. The most important thing about the new uh, digs at the, for the Toronto Blue Jays is the brisket nachos were fantastic. Now I went, they have a bunch of new like, I'm, I love good. food. Uh, they have a bunch of new like food items out there. And I got the like the maple bacon hot dog because it's a baseball game. I'm yeah. like, I'm gonna get the hot dog. Yeah. And it was, I think I gave it like a seven and a half out of 10, but the brisket nachos get a solid nine for me. I, I still wanna try a few other things they got in there. Like they have some stuffed That's Jamaican good. patty or. Oh good, oh yeah. But th here's my beef. It's a ballpark. Yeah. The specialty hot dog you can only get in one specific stand. They have oh. hot dog stands everywhere, so but you have you to forever to line. No. And it's like a, and it's in the 200 no. section, so it's in the second level. So I had to go, go up to. Uh, but the seats have cup holders in them, so we're in the 21st century for the Toronto Blue Jays, and they won the game. So I'm happy about that. I'm a, <laughs> I'm a little tired because I'm an old man, and we actually stayed the whole game because we didn't take we didn't take our daughter to the game. It was just us. Oh, and you'll you'll get this. Uh, you're like this, um, I'm, I'm leaving the game, heading towards the train, and uh, I run into a fan of the show. So, like, you know how the skywalk is, like, all busy and whatever. So Jude here is like, oh, my goodness, I watch you guys every single day. Uh, great dude. He's like, you're changing lives. Fantastic. And, by the way, he, congratulations, because he, he just he had... Works on the GO train. Yeah, and he, had five, he, he just had a five-month-year-old. He's like, this is going to change our, our lives. He's like... His family is all into investing, and uh, good guy. Uh, obviously a Jays fan, which is a plus, and a fan of Trader TV Live, so was happy uh, to meet him. And I love when the vibe is good. Like, everyone's in such a good mood. Uh, but it was a, appreciate you, Jude. I hope you're in the chat. He said he was going to try and get in here this morning. Uh, obviously, working late. Gotta, right? I, got, I got to meet Jude because he has a five-month-year-old. Five months? Well, that's my bad. I'm like, that's, yeah, I know. No, five, <laughs> no, five months old. And I think one of the cool things, you know this is true. Um, I know, well, you're, yeah. You're a dad, you know this is true. And I said this, one of our friends had the same phenomenon as well. Like when you, when you have your first, your first kid, and I, look, I only have one kid, but 
there's something that happens. Like, you're always like, ah, what kind of a dad will I be? Like, what, how will it change my life? You don't think it'll change you, but believe me, it does change you. Like, you become way more, you become automatically more efficient with your time and focused. It's weird, like, it just sort of happens. Like, if you were not organized, like, there are ways that you will just become that. Um, so it was, it was a lot of fun. Uh, the Leafs even won last night, man. Like, the it Leafs was- even won. Well, no, because it went... It's actually really good. Yeah, but it went to overtime. Like, yeah, it, they were yeah. cruising, and because you can stream the game. The they have, Raptors they have free Wi-Fi. Won. You can say the Raptors. We don't want the, Ra won. the Raptors need to lose every single game. I know, game I was saying can. that. Now they keep winning. And then congratulations to UConn, not, but nobody cared because they only cared about the Women's National Championship. Yeah, for the first year and only year, probably, the women's... They, they got 18 million. That was a huge number. Like, congratulations. Uh, but it's all Caitlin Clark. Those numbers will... But once she's Window. Oh, no, they'll be... It's like... Maybe five percent of those numbers next year. I don't know. There isn't a compare. I couldn't think of a comparable uh, for her. I was like, who? Like recently? What? No, like, what, like yeah, it was like, like maybe comparable to when Mello, uh, Mello was there for a year in Syracuse, something like that. Everything good? Yeah, <laughs> yeah we're. Um, it's only Fabian for a couple of days. Yeah. All right, uh, Google's really blasting, which is really super nice. I mean, Google up 1.24%, taking out 52-week highs, all-time highs. I mean, this has been such a nice run here uh, for Google. W uh, work with Broadcom, so on and so forth here. Big number, big, big move up. I mean, wow. You know, they, I was thinking that, like, right now, you just, I was saying this yesterday, you, you, you know, you wait to take advantage of big names that get beat up. And I really think that, you know, Apple is one of these names that pretty soon, you know, it's going to, and now I think the market pulls back. I think Google's getting ready. But, you know, a, a, an announcement with Gemini, an announcement with their two billion. I mean, just imagine once they get an AI product and they charge five bucks, 10 bucks a month, that's two billion people in their ecosystem that just hit the pay now button. And that is recurring revenue. I, I, I'm excited for Apple. I just, you know, I see what Google's doing. I see all these moves and I just wonder who next. And uh, I look at Apple and say, you next. Who next? I don't know when. You, you put the T in, there's no T on the end, it's next. No, next, that's what I'm saying, who next? Who next? Who next? next, you know, there's no T on that. I wonder what happened to that guy. I don't know. Wow. I can't wait for that fight between Tyson and Jake Paul. I, I honestly, I saw, I was like all really excited about Jake Paul, but then like when he gets in the ring, he just fights these guys and whatever, you know, he's paid a lot of money to a lot of people um, and they, he's given their, the largest payday. Yeah, he's made a lot of money for person, a lot of people. Yeah. You know, um, but like, I think Mike Tyson is just gonna like, just pop him one time, and then that is game over. But that's sort of... I, I think that's going to be... No, but also... If he catches him, that's the thing. It's, 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 oh, he's going to catch him. He's going he to catch him. But, like, I, I don't wonder, like, is, is, Mike, is Mike really going to... Yes. You think he's this really going to go, go yeah. Mike? Is he going to be Mike? Or yes. is he just going to go out there and get no, his back and be entertaining? Is, I actually think that he has some self... Okay, so like a pride thing. Right, yeah. so I think that he's going to come out there and be like, no, I'm not. But then I hope so, I hope so. But then no, I no. also do think that it will be rigged. Because what, uh -oh. like a second fight, like no matter what happens, something's going to happen whereby either Jake Paul gets knocked out so quick that it's like we have to have another one, you know? I could, you know what though? Or it goes five rounds. I don't even know how many rounds. No, that, see, that makes sense because this is the, this like is the first time that non, like, Paul fans, let's just call it that way, if you're not into watching the Paul fights, which I'm not even, like, I, I'm not, it's not a big deal. Like, Tyson makes it different for a lot of people. Because then everyone's like, yeah. any, of those, any of those people that are like, oh, I'm, I, I like real boxing, all that nonsense, well, then you're probably, you grew up a Mike Tyson fan, and therefore you want to watch this. Yeah. So I think you're dead on about that. They'd be almost foolish not to have a second regardless, but I don't know if you need a controversy to have a second fight. I feel like, like either one wins, there's a path to a second fight. I don't know. I should Google how much Mike Tyson's worth. I think he's. I think he's done okay, right? He had that marijuana company. He had some properties. I mean, I know he he helped out a lot of his boys, which oh, can always be a let's problem. Ask, uh, uh, you want to ask Perplexity? What are we gonna ask? No, I was Gemini? gonna. No, I'm gonna go. Perplexity. Um, we don't have any guests, do we? Okay, keep going. Um, 
what is no, this isn't perfect. Yeah, what is yeah. Mike Tyson's I'm network? Going, I'm going to co-pilot. Let's go yeah, co-pilot. But you know what? That uh, Logan Paul is really legit in the WWE. That guy's main eventing WWE. See now that is logical. Like I can see WrestleMania. With that charisma, I can see how that will work and, in the long term. And that pri just his business too. His prime is in the middle of the ring at WrestleMania. Really? Okay, How I don't much? know if ten Ten million? Ten million? No. You think? No. No, 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 no. I thought Mike Tyson would have been 50 million, north of 50 million. I would have sure. thought. Let me ask for Just because of, what did you ask, Gemini? Uh, no, no, I asked. You asked um, ChatGPT? I asked Copilot. You see, this that, is the, no, that's Copilot. That's yeah, Copilot. That's ChatGPT, yeah. Yeah, but. So that, that's, that's what I'm thinking is, is that, see, now we have to go to another AI. This, this to me is one of, it's not a problem. It's just there's so many options out there for AI. If it pumps the same answer, but I'm surprised. Probably will. Okay. Um, we can go. We can go back. We'll figure out what the best uh, AI yeah, to million. use. They're to pulling ask the same about, sport. Yeah, Mike Tyson's net worth. Did that surprise any of you guys out there? I don't know. What do you think at that desk? Ten million for Tyson? I thought he would have been worth more than that. What do you think? This pay per view. It's going to be interesting. Uh, if Tyson can last, like Tyson's been making it a point to say that he's got to get him out super quick because yeah, he doesn't yeah. have the gas yeah. tank to go yeah. the distance. So he's if he can get what, him out, fifty plus. Yeah, exactly. Old guy. I mean, he still looks old. very scary on social media, to, <laughs> yes, to put it bluntly. Um, we were just talking about this, uh, guys. Disney just popped up. I mean, there's no, not a lot of volume behind this, but um, I just saw a tweet that said Bob Iger has unfollowed Elon Musk on X. Hi, Bob. <laughs> Breaking news. <laughs> But is it, wouldn't it be more? I'm surprised he even A uses it, B followed him in the first place. Like, come on. This is what's happening? That's the, that's the news today? You know, it's like what Drake says trigger fingers turn Twitter fingers real quick. And all of a sudden, Bob Iger is unfollowing people. I don't know. I'm going to follow Mike what Tyson. Are you, what are you Am I following Mike Tyson over here? 10 million. I Does feel that make any sense? He's going to get oh, Jake man. Paul is going to pay the man more than $10 million for this fight. Yeah, so the, now you... So no wonder this guy's taking this fight. Now there's going to be two fights. I mean, forget about pride anymore. Right. This man didn't want to get paid, I feel like. Come on. Wow, okay, that, that's a surprise. Uh, what's not rigged? I'm oh, you know what? Sharif's record. Oh, yeah, what's up with I that? I owe you, Mr. Uh, uh, Daniel Westermeyer, thank you for the super chat. I owe you this. I'll, I'll get it done this week because uh, I'm supposed to do the Bring Sally Up Challenge. I'll do, I'll, do it, I'll do it in like the midday, one day this week. Maybe we'll do it on like a Friday. What's not rigged? I'm coming for Sharice Record. Did the Sally Challenge for the second time last night. Hit two minutes. Wife and I are training. Two minutes. Dan, I haven't done two minutes. Oh, I'm going to get embarrassed. Okay, so I'm just going to put it out there. I'm just trying for two minutes. Sharif did the whole bloody song. It's like three and a half minutes long. It's a lot of push-ups. Three and a half minutes long. What, did he have a, like a broken arm or something? What, I thought he would have been able to crush three and a half minutes. It's harder than you think. It's, I like, mean, in my prime, I was probably three and a quarter. It's only, it's actually only 30 push-ups to bring Sally up. You know what's pimp? The, uh, was, uh, this is actually a random spring training story. Bryce Harper, when we went to see spring training, that guy's walk-up music was the Bring Sally Up song. It's like, the guy has a workout song for his music. Like, that guy's an animal. Like, basically, he's just telling you that, yeah, I'm, I'm that guy. He's that dude. Uh, we, yeah, Bryce Harper signs a $500 million deal or whatever he buys. Or Mike Tyson, Mike Tyson 10, 10 million. Tyson, That's still crazy. 300 million to 10 million. And this is not a knock. I'm not knocking Mike Tyson, but like a lot of this show, it's about everyone has a different trading journey. Uh, some people are traders short term. Some people are swing traders. Some people are like investing or whatnot. The more important thing is financial literacy matters, man. Like the ability to have control over your own financial future and to be able to understand the value of the market, the value of investing, like what is right for you, your different time horizons, or like where to get those questions answered. It's just, it's so important. And I'm not saying, this is not to rag on Mike, but like 300 million, I'm surprised he's only worth $10 million because he, you know, he had it all. And obviously there's a lot of backstories and all that good stuff. But at some point we'll get to the market as, Oh yeah, Brad, Arm. So it never, it turned out there wasn't anything specific with Arm, but it's actually holding that gain from yesterday, Sean. So uh, Arm will be on, 30. it'll be on the radar again today after that semi breakout that it did. But the future is looking shockingly, I mean, we're still in yesterday's range, but we're at the top of yesterday's range. So keep an eye on this. The chips are always in play. Google's the real runner today. 
at least early on. It's the only one percenter of the big boys. So, uh, you mentioned this. I can hear myself, by the way, Fabian. Just to, um, I'm just going to take this out because that's super annoying. Uh, we were talking about that uh, Broadcom AVGO, AVGO story, but um, the guys touched on it. So back to the upside for that. Uh, Tesla did not move on that, but we are back to the top end of the range here for Tesla. There was a couple of things. Uh, for Tesla, once again, I mean, it seems like a daily occurrence for Tesla, but um, I mean, all of these looking pretty positive here so far this morning. Yeah, and Elon Musk in the news again, not Tesla specific here, Brendo, but with respect to uh, Twitter or X, excuse me, a Brazil judge basically uh, uh, ordering him to unblock certain accounts or block certain accounts to which he's refusing. So he's in the news again. Uh, I was watching this morning an RBC analyst on Squawk Box give his take about the full self-driving, um, uh, you know, announcement that he made last week on Friday, basically giving his opinion about, you know, it's probably going to include some sort of geofencing. Uh, and it's not going to be full out self-driving. He was making the point, Brendo, uh, how do you FSD on the Champs-Élysées or, <laughs> or downtown <laughs> Oxford in, in London? It's point. very hard. Like, right? Can you imagine going around the, no. the Arc de Triomphe at yeah. the top of the circle that's like so insane with traffic all the time? Uh, I, I'm just noticing there was a, uh, Kathy Wood was back in there buying up more yesterday off that a huge flush that we had going back to that Reuters, whatever you want to call it, uh, when they said they were going to scrap the Model 2. We had that huge sell-off going back to Thursday and then it bounces back nicely on Friday so, or and into yesterday as well. Uh, so 175, guys, looking uh, like a thing here possibly today for Tesla. Oh, I think so. I also think 171 might be a little bit of a thing. I think, when, look, when yesterday is an inside day, I think it, it makes all the more sense in the world that if you had to keep, if you like the long and there's the support level at 171, then today just look for that level to possibly come in. Like instead of, instead of the opportunity or, the, or assuming you're going to get some kind of a break out of the range trade, I think yesterday taught us you probably have a chance at this 71. So it was the higher low from yesterday. The robo taxi story, I think is, I, I think it's cool and it's interesting and we'll find out exactly what that all means in August. That said, I don't know that anything's gonna be imminent here. Obviously Tesla was already in a bit of a rut and if you think about it, it, it probably had something to do with bouncing off this double bottom at 160 and then just making a reasonable recovery. Like if you, look at, if you look at the channel since it broke its last support at 180, it went to 160, bounced to 180, went to 160, and we're at 173. So if this move is getting to the 50 period at 180, 181, which would be reasonable to test the 50 period on a bounce, then I think you're, I'd at least be looking longs into 180. Until we get to 180, 181, after that kind of a flush and double bottom, I want to be looking for the long back to this level. So 171 for me on Tesla, it's a continuation play. I'd rather not take the breakouts. I'll tell you right now, the breakout trades have not been as great um, as they were a couple of weeks ago, at least before I came back, uh, before I was at spring training. So I'm thinking the 71 level here on Tesla, not necessarily out of the water for good, but it's definitely bouncing off that 160. Yeah, to me, it's, I don't know. I mean, we've had this in here. We really like the 168 level. We've talked about that a couple times, although we've broken it and it's come back in. I mean, the bottom's been 165. I don't see any reason why we get anywhere near there today. I mean, it's, it was a really good move yesterday on Tesla. But I, I still feel like, and someone asked in the chat yesterday, I can't remember who it was, but I should remember who it is. And they just said, isn't Tesla kind of in the middle? And, and that's what I think is true. I, I just, I'm not sure. I want to be long. I think the story is great. I like the Tesla story here moving forward. Oh, I saw Lucid Air Dream, by the way, on the road yesterday for the first time. Nice. That was pretty nice. Um, but, yeah, I don't know. We, we have to at least, I don't know. I mean, one, that seems too high, 178. I, um, yeah, I'm not really feeling Tesla today, to be honest with you guys. Uh, I don't know. I was looking at AMD. We'll talk about that in a minute. But this is a good break. Yesterday's high. I mean, we were up nicely yesterday. I feel like we could easily break that almost immediately. If you like the long today and you think Tesla works, it's up the same as the market. So then I think you take this break. I know Neil is saying that they, you know, they haven't really been working, but I just think with, te with a Tesla, it's just 
you can take this early break and then you have your out. Like you can get out at 173.50, kind of where we are here in the pre-market. I just hate to miss that early huge move if there is going to be one for Tesla. So that's it. I mean, you can see there's been wicked moves off the open. So it's just one of those things where if I think if you're going to play a name on a breakout and you like it, this is fine. But I just don't know if the catalyst is there because you're only up 0.27 and I don't really see a catalyst. I mean, other than Bob Iger unfollowing Elon Musk. But I, I don't, you know, I'm not, I'm, not, I'm not super excited about it. We've got other fish to fry here today. You know, even you guys are mentioning Palantir. We've got cannabis names. We've got crypto oh, right. bouncing in and around 70,000. So I'm going to pick another day to mess around with Tesla, but don't get me, um, don't, don't get it wrong. Like if we start seeing a high like this, like you see how you make that high yesterday morning and then you make it again in the afternoon? You know, if you're feeling short at that time, that's when you can execute. So give yourselves a VWAP here, give yourselves a high, but play on some levels because right now you're just in the middle. I don't really feel uh, strongly about this one way or the other. So uh, what do you think here, Sharif? You, you kind of like uh, trading Tesla a bit. I do, Sean. Looks good. Like Brendan was saying, it looks like it's accumulating for that 175. I mean, and the, the whole idea is uh, he tried to counter that narrative last week with the Model 2 being canceled with what everybody really wants to know about, which is the robo-taxi. Yeah. 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 I, I still find it really interesting that he deleted that tweet. I know. Why would he do that? That makes everything look suspicious. You know what I mean? More to, more to come on the Model 2. Here's, um, uh, we're going to go get some analyst moves here. Uh, Dara's going to have some upgrades and downgrades. Uh, here's one that is moving higher right now. WDC, back to day highs. We talked about this yesterday, had a nice gap higher. Just faded it all day long. Uh, but we're right back to that pre-market high from yesterday, an upgrade for Western Digital, as mentioned. Uh, Dara has a few other ones. Sorry about that. Uh, GE here at the top of the list after getting an upgrade from TD Cowan. This is after that spinoff we had recently of GE, Vernova, and Aerospace. We also have American Eagle getting an upgrade from JP Morgan. Wells Fargo here upgrading GitLab. And Alley Financial getting an upgrade here as well. In terms of the downgrade size, we have American Express getting a downgrade here from Barclays. ChargePoint getting downgraded by Goldman Sachs, trading down about 3% right now. So a bit of a, a rough start for ChargePoint here. We have Cliffs getting a downgrade from Wolf Research. And last but not least, Comcast are getting downgraded by XA and B&B Paribas to kick off the day, guys. GE's just been on an absolute, like, just tear uh, since... The industrials, I don't know if no, you no, saw the, the industrials in all together, like, don't get me wrong, like, I'm not complaining about uh, some, of the other, some of the other names out there, like my cat, uh, my cat, uh, like Caterpillar. Ooh, I have something in my yeah, eye. You guys should get a cat. You know, uh, so... You would like, you would love your cat way more than Caterpillar stock. Well, so here's, actually, this, it's funny oh, that you yeah. say that, because um, I was at the game with my university roommate, uh, Adrian, and he's like a huge cat person. And he's the person that got me on, if I had to choose, like personally, I would probably choose a cat over a dog, because I- I'll like, say that's fail, but I like no, it. But I like all, the no, move, I like the move. All of, I like the move. Most, okay, for, if I look at all of the pets that my friends have had, I have, every single cat has just been great. And then like every, a couple of dogs that my cousins have had have been like, eh. All, all cats are great. No, but they like, just, yeah, they just so, chill though. There's not much. They, are, they are so chill. Yeah. They don't give two you know what's, which I think is pretty cool. And GE doesn't give two you know what's. How about that? I just feel as if, if it's gonna trend up, the simple strategy would be like, look at the, Sharif just said accumulation, right? So it goes up and it accumulated at 46, it tried to do so and then a ramp. At the end of the day, it accumulated back at 47, Consolidation ramp. Uh, you can accumulate at 53, dip into it, and go. So that pattern would suggest, like, well, it's two, one of two things. If it's a deep move in here to like 53 half, that's like a maybe. But the accumulation in the afternoon was right here at about 156. Like up and down, it was a pretty, you saw the afternoon, because maybe because of the eclipse, I don't know, but 156 in here. And if it cannot hold on to the 55, 56, I think you'd look back into that support for G. Trend is your friend. Now, our our charts aren't gonna adjust to the spinoff. So just imagine that it was just continuously going up and that would give you a better idea. But the spinoff, it adjusted and it's been all green since then. So strong, strong move up in General Electric. I feel you wanna play the accumulation levels when you can find them. So you know that 55, 56 area looks pretty good for G. Happy shareholder here. 
Uh, yes, we love GE. GE's been amazing. I, I still can't believe that was one of the stocks. I remember buying that in the financial crisis. It didn't do much for a while. Uh, now it started to go for sure. Look at this. This is XLI. Look at the industrials. Just absolutely blasting, blasting, man. Its low was in November of 96, up to 125 and looking to break out. I still think things are getting a little top heavy up here. But again, on the Market Recap Show, we do talk all about ETFs. And that's why we knew exactly what was happening up here with XLI. So um, again, I feel like we could turn around a little bit. This would be something to potentially short if we're feeling that the market is a little heavy, especially if we do get a turn in the economies around the world. I don't necessarily think that's going to happen, but you know, industrials would get hit uh, in that case. So I saw on their cliffs, we, we've had Michael Noss, we've had Raheem all talk different copper, different commodity names. I had Michael last night talking silver. We talked about XME. We talked about um, one of his little minor gold stocks there. I can't remember the name now. Not Roxy, but something like that. Uh, that was really, really moving around. But here's CLF with a nice, it's downgraded today. So I'm thinking this is potentially giving opportunities to maybe get in on pullbacks back into 2021 bucks. So uh, that's CLF in and around this area. So we'll, we'll watch for this stock. Only 67,000 shares so far. But um, yeah, another name to watch out that was on that upgrades and downgrade board. Yes, sir. Uh, just watching a couple things here. Tilray, first off, just popped up in front of me, back to the upside a little bit, 225 coming back into play, but uh, not a lot of volume behind that. Again, if you missed it, uh, earnings, a uh, bit of a miss for TLRY, downside on that. There's this LASE, uh, more than doubling at this point here in the pre-market. Uh, Laser Photronics securing an order from L3 Harris this morning. So LASE which is a pretty tiny float here, four and a half million. Exactly, Brendo, and I'm just looking. It is a former runner, guys, for all the small cap traders out there. This one had a big uh, 2023 early on January, and in late March, it ran all the way up to 725. I would say keep your eye out for that four and a quarter level. That's where we topped out in June of last year. Yeah, we were mentioning last, uh, or this morning, uh, yesterday, you know, most of the action yesterday was in some of these small caps. Yeah. Like, the bigger names weren't really uh, that active yesterday. So here's another one going, guys. 375 five now here for L-A-S-E. Lays and uh, deal with uh, L LHX there because they're like, four, that's a $40 billion company they have a deal with. But the, the story for these is always like, these floats. It's actually $8 million is really not that bad. So it's not the short float. It is the actual float. But $4, it just came into here. And anytime I see something like this, it's like, okay, well, there's, this is your breakout. So for all of you that are trading, if you trade these, if you pre-market or early morning are looking for these stocks to trade, I always feel like that's your, if you, if you get it at like a 250 on that breakout, like look at what happens when it gets to that level on the daily chart. Like this is 820s before we're coming on. Like that's your break with maybe a risk to the two. And then you see on the daily, you got room to $4. Maybe you're taking some out there. But then when it comes back in, it's got to hold that above that 250. Otherwise, you run the risk of just giving it, giving everything back. So it's a bit of a ridiculously high consolidation. The deal is with, when you get these deals with uh, small cap names or like micro cap names with larger companies, a lot of times the devil's in the details in terms of how much they can actually gain. That sometimes will overstate the number because it's based on the number of years, all that kind of good stuff. So you devil's in the details, but it's all about momentum here. And if you're going to play these, I'm always very wary. You're now talking about 30% above where the breakout occurred in that last bag hold level. And your 30 cents, which is like less than 10% um, away from that resistance on the daily. So I'd be a little bit more worried there'd be some profit taking in front of that $4 level. But great look. If you've got a 250 break, I mean, that's why you're in early is to take trades like that. Just understand, if you take a 250 break, you're risking 50 cents on that trade. and You're trying to make a buck. But uh, if, if you took it, you did. Just uh, working on the sticky note. It will be out soon. But make sure you get our watches.traretv.live and get information about many names coming up for you at the big desk now? right now. Yeah, let's do that. Let's get into uh, what you need to know here heading towards the open on uh, what should be an interesting morning here, individually speaking anyways. Again, CPI tomorrow morning. So yesterday we saw the market in a bit of a wait and see. Yep. 
pattern. What's up today? We closed exactly where we closed on Friday yesterday, guys. 52.53 on the ES June contract. Let's go ahead and say the same thing we said yesterday, 52.50 as support and 52.75 as resistance once we can break out through that uh, that top and bottom after CPI. As Sean was mentioning, if you haven't done so, make sure you grab that. It is uh, super simple, tradertv.live. You'll see that pop up appear. You enter your e email address and then uh, you get that every single day in your inbox for absolutely nothing. It's free. Look at that new graphic, Fabian. I didn't even know Love you it. finished that yet. Uh, good stuff. Uh, let's talk about Microsoft here. Um, moving around, uh, actually right now, a little bit of volume coming back into the downside, still a quarter of a percent. Um, I mean, we're, there's an AI theme floating around this morning, but however, there's not a lot of movement here for no. some of these stocks. Yeah, look, Microsoft making big investments in Japan. That's uh, the crux of the story here, to the tune of about $3 billion, $2.9 billion to be exact. What they're going to do is install advanced AI semiconductors at two existing facilities in Japan, one in the east, one in the west. Uh, this is part of Japan's overall bigger plan to modernize uh, a lot, many parts of their economy. They've earmarked about 4 trillion yen. Uh, for AI, AI advancement, Brendo. So first step, I guess? Yeah, a little bit of a pullback here, guys. Not a lot of action so far, though, for Softy. So Soft, like, like you said, not a lot of action, uh, Brennan. And I think a lot of times when you have a day like yesterday, someone had mentioned Uber, and I was just kind of taking a look at it. Every time someone brings up a chart, I'm like, ooh, that's interesting, and I haven't looked at it in the morning. I just want to get an idea where it is. But when you talk about not a lot of action. The good news would be, well, look at the defined range opportunity, like 23 up in the bottom and then 27 up at the top and the Kashkari level still over top at 428. So there's a lot uh, to like. What I'm wary about here is if it breaks 30 and tries to go higher, what happened to like Meta the day that it did, like Meta yesterday, like this little test of the high, and then you get like that pullback when it tries to break out on the daily. And I feel as if I think we got something similar. When Amazon took, it was last week actually, when Amazon uh, made a similar consolidation break, it kind of failed the break and then came back in and then ran after. And I think in a market like this, I'd be a little bit worried of that, that if we do run the 30 high, you're probably gonna, like that day you're gonna get a pullback and then look for continuation after. All that said, I don't think we necessarily have to deal with that right away. The levels are, like, it's so clear. It was a double bottom yesterday, and then it was actually Friday's afternoon support at 40, 423 and a half. So I think you're going MJ on this bad boy. Um, that's Michael Jordan. He wears the number 23 for any old Really? Guy. Well, I don't know. Like, <laughs> I know, I'm just, he's the GOAT. No, but really, like, you had the same range all of yesterday in Microsoft, and then half of the day on Friday. So if at the open and you want to trade the stock, you're not first thinking about 423. It's like, ah, like what else are you going to do? Unless you want to be short this thing at four, you know, like at 427 and a half or something. But if you're looking for long, it's got to be down here. I just think Google's. I like the Google long a little bit better today. So I think of the those names. I'm probably going to stick to Alphabet. But if you're in Microsoft, the range is speaking to you here. What was that athlete's name again? I'm going to use perplexity here. Michael. What was it? What was Jackson. It? Jackson. Okay. Yeah. Game six. Uh, is a good reliever. Yeah, too. I um, am AI, 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 AI. Back to the desk. Yeah, I said there's a bit of a theme this morning. I wasn't lying. Yeah. Uh, Meta, about the same right now. Um, higher on the morning so far, but only just. Yeah, they're going to launch um, a couple of smaller versions of their large language model coming up uh, next week. This one was a little bit weak yesterday, but uh, ends the day basically at day lows. Uh, we're back to uh, 522 here from Meta this morning. Yeah, Meta continuing to compete with their open source uh, LLM. That's kind of the beauty about Llama here. Parts of it are open source. Some other parts are closed, so uh, not completely open source. Also, TD Cowan commenting on Meta today, uh, you know, keeping its outperform rating and uh, increasing the price target from 500 to 590. So we'll be uh, on watch today, Meta. Yeah, I can talk. I can talk a little bit about Meta. I'm I'm making this sticky note at rate rate out. It's gonna be in two minutes. Does not have Meta on it, but I like Meta today. Um, again, up more than the market. I think that that's enough of a catalyst right there alone. All the stories are going to be basically the same. I'm not going to sit here and talk macro about like where where I think these are going to go based on some of their product releases or stuff. But 
I, you know, I like Meta, I like these bottoms. 520 is a very, very important level. Obviously, if you're looking here on the daily chart, this little break back down below fills that gap potentially into 510. So we're really looking to hold. And we've only been up here for two days. It's not like this is huge rocket science, but we did wick to this high and then faded before. And now we're kind of feeling about a pushback in here for Meta over the last couple of days. It was pretty weak there yesterday. We saw the market kind of held on yesterday, but Meta didn't because Meta closes 527 uh, two days ago, Friday. And then yesterday, that was the high. And then we just faded into the close. So the NASDAQ, I think, was, was up 0.03 or something like that yesterday, depending on where, where, where we're looking at that close. But Meta was not. Meta was down. So for me today, we have to hold that. We did yesterday at the close. So it's kind of a no-brainer level to test along, maybe if the market's kind of just hovering around. But if the market starts to really get hit and you're going to lose names like Google and things like that, I feel like Meta will be lost already. So I, I really think w let it fail through 520. And then honestly, I would rather just hit this 519 short. So that would be my play here. Even though we're up more than the market and I love Meta, it's a, it's a big position for mine, myself. But at the same time, I just wonder if we're getting a little top heavy in some of these names. The market doesn't seem to think it wants to do too much right now. So Meta, just from yesterday's momentum, I, I would say if there's one name, and look, Meta could be up 5% by the end of the day and crushing everything. But just based on what I see from yesterday, it was a fade all afternoon, and it started first thing in the morning. So we had a nice move up, then hit, bounce, bounce, high, 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 and then we just kept on fading, and we kind of, you know, 522 kind of held. So let's see what happens right now off open, but for me, Meta is kind of a, a no-fly zone. Until we break below 520, that gets me interested. Yeah. Um, we, we touched on it a little bit during the midday. I think Elon had that uh, spaces. You guys were talking about it, I think, Remember yesterday. It? Oh, yes, yes, he had yeah, the... So he was, he was commenting on that. We were just seeing right. on CNBC, they were quoting an Elon Musk quote on AI, and he mentioned the simple fact that the smart, I don't even know what the, the right term is, the level of intelligence, I guess, yeah. for uh, artificial intelligence will surpass humans by next year. Interesting. Um, or at least, I mean, I guess he's referring to Grok in that case. You know what's funny is because I was watching the Sam Altman uh, podcast with Lex Friedman, right. and he has a completely different take about what AGI is going to be. Um, and he actually criticizes LLMs in a sense, says, you know, they get to a certain point, Brendo, where they can't do a lot of the regular stuff that you and I do, like drive, pick up, but higher level reasoning, it really excels at. Right. So it's super interesting how that works. Yeah, uh, more to come, obviously. This is the uh, Broadcom note this morning for anyone who missed it. Uh, they're going to migrate uh, VMW's, or VM, yeah, VMW was the stock, VMware's workloads to Google Cloud. Uh, so Broadcom teaming up with uh, Google on that front in reverse. Um, ABGO gets some of uh, Google's AI tools in theirs. Yeah, that's uh, the, the big headline. There was another smaller headline today with respect to ARM. Google uh, revealed the details of a new version of its data center artificial intelligence chip. It's going to be CPU based and is going to be on the ARM uh, central processor platform. So we'll keep eyes on both Google, ARM and Broadcom. Yeah, a bit of a pullback here, guys, as we mentioned. It was uh, more than 1% early on uh, this morning for Alphabet. I, I feel like uh, some of the... Some of the fun in Alphabet just went over to ARM because ARM just uh, broke 130, headed to 133. That stock is wild. And Lucid came out with Q1 delivery numbers, 1,728 vehicles uh, produced, and they delivered 1,964. I'm just going to jump because someone mentioned Lucid was moving. It, there was big volume. And you can't even see. There you go. You'll be able to see here. There was like a big volume spike. Like it went up and then it went right down at 256 and it's right back to where it was before. So decent volume spike, but it's right back to where it was just quickly because I don't see ARM or the chips on there. So ARM did another breakout, like the consolidation break and then another breakout through 130. This one might have a chance to go like squeeze mode. Remember, everyone thought this thing was going to fall apart uh, after the IPO. Uh, lockup expired and it's going in the other direction. If it holds a 130 bid, this is probably momentum play. I actually was looking for a 128 because <laughs> that's where it kind of consolidated to. I don't think the 128 dip buy is in the cards uh, today. And, even, and if it hits, it's too much of a reversal to even want it. So 
Well, we've got to look for something else with ARM looking pretty strong today. As far as Alphabet goes, love the fact that you're breaking this one out. It's trying to get through this triple top. Uh, the 52-week high is just above the 155. I think if it can hold this channel up here, 55 to 56, you can take another stair up. But just be careful. It did have this wick in here, and that was like an after uh, aftermarket push. And this one they announced like the whole like AI pricing, blah, blah, blah. And it went to 158 and a half. I, I think you respect that initially. Sometimes those spikes can matter where they, where they make a market and push it back down. So I'd be wary of you know, trying to get long up here. I don't think you want to chase it, but a dip back into previous resistance to turn into support, I'll go for that in Alphabet. Look, here we go. Um, Alphabet is your number one name here on the sticky note. I don't think there's any reason to ignore Google whatsoever today. If we're lucky enough to get anything back uh, at 155, we're taking that because this has been a absolutely fantastic runner over the last little while. We've been going long on Google now for a minute. I mean, I think we've been going long for weeks uh, on this name here. We like this break above 150. It continues to go. We got the Broadcom news. If we miss the long on this name right off the jump, that will be fine because we'll be able to play it back to VWAP. So what I was saying is I really like the 155 if we can get back in there. Yesterday's top, that would be beauty if we could get that. But if we don't, then let's let this open up, figure it out, and then watch out for this little magic line right there called the VWAP. So we'll wait out for that, but that's what I'm liking. I really like all these initiatives. And like I said, we can sit here as day traders and say, you know, this is a great move for Broadcom or Google or Meta or whatever. You trade the charts at the end of the day. I mean, I'm sitting here trying to make a little bit of money, not trying to call tops and bottoms, you know, for the next couple months or days. So let's wait to see if this can fall in for us. 155 would be a pretty sweet level. If you're here to make money, that that's one that you're going to look at. But you're always looking for bigger trades to be able to put some shares down on. I like Google today. I don't see why we are going to be messing around and break lower than this 155. I mean, even if we do, we have 154.50 here that should hold as well. So I really like getting, getting a position here and, and, and really taking a shot. But again, we've been sort of wrong on names that have had news, that have exceeded the market, and that are just quite frankly too high. So I do think there is a chance that we could come back into this level. And I feel like we'll have to preach, preach patience early on this name, but it will not be forgotten. We, we had two trades yesterday in the morning, two names, Apple and Amazon, and it was an absolute fire day. So let's just wait to see what winds up happening here with Google. I like the trade down there, and I just think that we have to be patient with it. Let's not get too excited too early, but Google is going to be the number one idea on the sticky note. Yeah, let's talk crypto a little bit. Back to uh, near highs yesterday. We're getting a bit of a pullback this morning. Um, I just brought up Coinbase. I was reading through this note. Uh, Kathy Wood continuing to sell some of her crypto-related holdings, rightfully so, back towards the highs as we were talking about, but to the tune of when it comes to Coinbase. Anyways, Coin used to be her top holding. Um, now Tesla is, just because she's been selling so much yep. into uh, these levels. So Tesla, back to number one for Miss Kathy Wood. Yeah, well, JMP Securities also liking Coin as well, Brendo, uh, maintaining their overweight rating, increasing the price target about 20 bucks from 300 to 320. With respect to some other names uh, in crypto, we'll keep eyes on Ethereum. It's continuing to trade above 3,600. The focus here is on the new possible spot ETF that we could get for Ethereum. So. Keep an eye on crypto today. Uh, for anyone who missed it, we had that uh, initial move very, very early on um, yesterday. This is a 15-minute chart, and then it's just been a slow grind back downside for Bitcoin. So um, Vanek, um, yeah, Vanek is one of the is Ark and Vanek were the first two to apply for yeah, the, come over to for my the screen. ETH, for the ETH uh, ETF. This was oh. this was Elon Musk tweeting this from Starlink. It's gorgeous. There, there's the eclipse right there. Yesterday, isn't that pretty sick? So there it is, Elon Musk. But it's a flat earth, right? I'm going to like that. <laughs> a flat sun. Uh, repost that. Like what, what kills me is it's like, like if you're, like don't get me wrong, like conspiracy theories, I get, I get it. It's fun to be part of like a club or something like that and feel like you're into it. But like when you see that, like what's, what's your end game? Like how do you, like what do you even say? It's Photoshop. It's like when we landed on the moon. It's like, come on, Same man. Stuff. Oh, but anyways, 
um, uh, yeah, the, ETH, the ETH potential ETF, uh, VanEck said they're expecting in March that the initial application will get rejected. That's what they came out with and were sort of speculating on. But it seems like you know the first two have already put their applications in, and we'll see when that does eventually happen. I think you know when you get close to approval, just treat it the same way you did BTC. Coin was good off the 250 level yesterday, but I don't know where Kathy Wood is selling, but 260. You can kind of see that, like you get to the 260 level and it's like a brick wall. Wick over in the morning and then resistance later in the day. So I don't see how there's, like if that's, if that's the pattern, then if it bumps up and fails a break of 260, I think short it back down through. So if it does it a third time, I think third time would be a charm. I was long yesterday off the 250, but today I'm feeling a little bit differently about it. So you know, we'll look for that on, on Coinbase. It's down 1%. Currently, and you're not really getting any like crazy action in Bitcoin. Ideally, you'd need it to pump to the, like at least push a little bit to the upside to get you to that 260 level. But if it does, someone was selling up there. Let's see if they continue. Yeah, without any real catalysts on Coinbase, that, that 260 level just becomes, you know, the, the, the one to look at. And I think it's a pretty obvious one, just like this one is as well. I think if you're going to look at micro strategy right here, I think a break of this 1400 is something to look at. So we'll have to wait to see because if Bitcoin starts to lose itself down here at 70,700, I feel like this break 1400 on MSTR is going to be a nasty one. We've tried it a couple times. We've gotten down to 12. We've gotten down to 13 on those breaks. So if somehow, for some reason, I don't know why crypto would lose it, but if it did and lose this 70,000, I could see micro strategy really getting whacked uh, again. So you may want to look for some puts, something like that. I mean, I don't know if it's going to be tradable from a day trade standpoint. I've never traded it. I, I think like the spread right now is $13 for 100 shares. Um, but I, I just think that that kind of a break right there, 14, just looks so nice. So I would watch out for MSTR. I think the real trade is here. And this is where I would get, you know, again, you guys, if you're trading it, I don't know what, what the premium is, but you know, puts something like that. I think we could retest 50 period moving average, especially if crypto gets a little spicy up at these levels. So watch out for MSCI. Remember, they're a Bitcoin, right? Like if Ethereum starts to go completely different. So watch out for that. Um, and uh, yeah, I'm gonna go get a quick reload on the coffee because Randy brought these huge mugs and uh, it gets real cold around the here. The heater. Real quick. Where is the other The heater? earth is flat. That's who would put that up there? That's so obvious. I mean, the moon, as proven yesterday, Any, is flat as well. I know. Anybody so, that I mean, answers that, it's, that we have a flat Earth is just kind of having fun, and you're, you know, you're taking a piss. But I know. It's, it's like, good. just whatever. Just, you know, let's be serious around here. No, but I saw a, a DVD in the chat. So, like, Kyrie Irving enters the chat. Yes, what's up, Kyrie? It just goes to show you can have crazy views if you got a great handle, apparently. <laughs> like, yeah, you pay a lot of money for that. Exactly. Uh, Mike but, Tyson. I don't have his handles, but at least I understand that the world is round, bro. All right, let's wrap it up with uh, some cannabis talk here. 250 was support over the past couple of days for Tilray. That comes and goes pretty quick. Uh, downside in a big way here. Um, I mean, it was better than expected, I guess, on the cannabis side, or on the alcohol side, yeah. I should say. Not necessarily the cannabis side to be expected here for uh, Tilray. No, sadly not, Brendo. Uh, the New York and Toronto listed company having issues, uh, well, the whole cannabis industry is. Uh, look, they narrowed their loss. They had a bit of a higher revenue. They did miss expectations by the street for their cannabis. They outperformed, obviously, on alcohol. We'll have to see how they do, but uh, yeah, down. About 14%. Uh, just to zoom out a little bit here, if uh, anyone hasn't looked at Tilray, this thing's had a uh, pretty good run, doubling over the past uh, few weeks here on a daily chart. So uh, we're back to about half of that right now, uh, trying to hold here for Tilray. I mean, it would be better if it was good news, I suppose. So, uh, But it's down 15%. That's the bad news. The good news would be the short flow's 15%. 15 or 16 percent, something like that, and it already bounced once off the 200 period moving average in this level at 210. So I like I was kind of I'm looking for a short in the 210, but I just don't want to be long the support level. It is a it's in theory an SSR bounce play because of what you saw there. You know, 210's already a key level. You can see it. It was resistance into a breakout and support at 210. 
I'd just rather be fading. And I even put in the note, like the fade back into two, uh, 235, 240, that support level in there is what I'd be looking for. And then the, the most local support at 250 is kind of like your, uh, kind of like your Alamo uh, for Tilray. What could be, a li could be interesting for, I think, some of the bulls in these spaces would be like the ACB or, uh, or CGC sympathy. Whereas if you, you know, when you get the Tilray earnings that are bad and these other runners, if they hold on to support, then you don't necessarily have to worry about, about their quarter dragging it further. It's like, well, ACB has a nice channel range at six. So if Tilray stabilizes, then you probably can get a little bit of a sympathy bounce there. Uh, CGC was a nice $10 level, but it's already taken that out. So I think you gotta look all the way back into, if you're looking something similar there, you'd be thinking about that $9 level uh, there on CGC. But I'm gonna short the pop in Tilray. We had to pay for locates, but they were like silly cheap uh, for us here at Real Trading. One of, the val one of the great things about real trading here, and I know it's not gonna be the same for everybody, I don't know where your brokers are, uh, but here, even if we don't have free shorts or, or locates to be able to borrow shares to go short into the market, like we have a portal to be able to jump in and pay for locates, and they're dirt cheap. Like that DXYZ or something was, was, was relatively cheap. You can short, we can short DJT if we want to, and that's relatively cheap for us, but this one was, I think one eighth of one cent or something ridiculously cheap. Uh, doesn't mean I have to go short. I don't want to be short tight to that $2.10 cent level because that was the first area of support. And it is going to open, barring some kind of a miracle, it's going to open up SSR down 10%. That means it's short sell restricted. If you're unfamiliar with that, if a stock is SSR or short sell restricted, it just means you cannot hit the bid to go into a short position and remove liquidity unless the last tick was green, meaning it's an uptick. So it's the uptick rule, and that'll apply for today and that'll apply for tomorrow on Tilray, so long as it opens up uh, that 10% down. So that's gonna be, um, you're asking, what do you ask? Fabian's asking what time range does the uptick have to be? It's anything on the tape. So if you pull up, so if I pull up Tilray on the tape here, I don't know why I have oil futures, probably because I was looking at it at some point, but See that? Like all you need is one green print when you're trying to hit the bid, and then you can remove then you can remove liquidity. Well, that's all. Like that's just anything. It's the last print has to be green, and then you can remove liquidity from the bid to go short. Because to get short, you can either offer twenties and wait for a fill, or you can remove liquidity from the people that are showing you bids at 19. And all it means when it's SSR is without those green prints, you cannot. Um, hit that bid to enter a short position. You can always cover along. It doesn't prevent you from doing that. But sometimes that's why you see the offer stack up. It's because there's no uptick and everyone's trying to get short and all they can do is sit on the offer. And it just makes it a little bit easier at times for a stock to run or squeeze when the shorts can't do that. So when it's SSR, I, I tend to always have more cons not conservative stops, but generally speaking, yeah, I don't want to give it too much room if I'm shorting into a stock that's SSR because if it does break higher, it's just, it's, a, it's an easy chance for it to squeeze. And especially day two. Like if Tilray's down, let's say it goes 15% to 30% down, then tomorrow the SSR bounce I usually find is even better when it also has a bit of a gap to try to fill. So I'm going to look to short the pop into that 240 as mentioned. Uh, for as far as um, cannabis names, I like Aurora down here at six. So it's down here, obviously, because of Tilray. It has a decent opportunity to go. We've seen, we've seen this name really get spicy as well, like from three bucks all the way up to eight, nine, um, and now fading back in. So you have just a little bit of a shelf here, I'm thinking, at six. You know, possible hold area. We held there yesterday, or I guess that was the fifth. Friday's bottom right there, right in and around six bucks. We have the, 50, uh, the 200 period moving average right here at $6. So this would be a name that if we continue to fall in for some of the cannabis names, I think I like an Aurora bid in and around $6. And this was a very, very high short float name uh, the last time we checked, ACB. Yeah, there it is, 22%. So it's kind of just 
par for the course here, but Aurora Cannabis, and again, get trade ideas. See the bottom right there, you can get all these platform coming through. This is what we're looking up this. News profile, you can easily put this on to any sort of a scanner. We have different scanners that I have as well. This one's made for me, uh, anything rallying into VWAP. So like right now we have Square, XOM, different names trying to rally into some VWAP levels and things like that. And definitely hit it up, Trader TV 20 I say shout out to Michael Noss. But I think that's what I would do is just put a bid. Uh, down in here, in and around six bucks. So that, that would be my play right there. The only thing that I have out right now is I have a bid out for Google. We've talked about that, that we like. We're gonna get the imbalances in just a couple minutes, so we'll kind of delay until we get that. And then if we have, if we go back to Brendan, we can go back to Brendan, let me know Fabian at, at one point here. Uh, but we'll get these imbalances in just a couple seconds. So we're gonna watch out for Google. Okay, good, we'll watch out for Google, we'll watch out for AMD uh, as well. My AMD pushback is into 168. So if we do get a drop into that, then we'll look. We talked about that a little bit uh, for AMD. I just think that this name's been one of the names that have been beat up the most. There's Apple with a slight sell. Wow, okay. So this pushes Apple down. I didn't have Apple on my radar today, but it is falling into these levels. We've hit these levels before. There's Google with a sell too. So where's my Google? Uh, not doing much. That is pushing it back down into VWAP. I don't really like seeing some of these sells early, to be honest with you. Um, Intel there with a the sell. Well, that's whatever. We, Ed held 38 yesterday, so that might be interesting to look at. The one name that we were long yesterday that was the trade of the day with Apple for me was Amazon. So that's coming out a bid. So it looks like we get Google with a slight sell. Apple was the one that I guess surprised most, although I don't, oh, there it is. Yeah, so this is the biggest one, wow. This was at 169, you see what I mean? So this is where you're gonna say like, oh wow, Apple's really tanking, but now we know why. You know, not many shows or anything will explain that this is kind of what happens to some of these names early, but it's Apple right now getting clocked, so might have to look at this. Yeah, I, it's interesting, because Apple wasn't on my radar at all, unless it was, and, and when I'm thinking about it, it's like, why not? Because the levels I had in for it yesterday looked like they are pretty darn good short levels. All that's hindsight, because you didn't know the imbalances were gonna come out to the sell side, obviously. But suddenly it looks like, yeah, 169 change, and then up top here, 169 half. Could be some fade spots. Apple's, it's so close to major support, that 167 and then 160, what's that, what, 165 going back to the October lows. But that's like that's a dollar and a half away. That's a full percentage point away from that low that you saw in March. I don't know if Apple is an opportunity at that 169 to 169 half for a bit of a fade. Uh, we did mention the stock that probably made the biggest move pre-market that isn't a small capper was when ARM uh, busted through 130. It's actually holding these highs. Like it's chilling out here 133. So ARM, it feels like it's trying to do a little bit of a squeeze again. It, the consolidation it's breaking out of, I think looking for a dip into this consolidation would spot you the 130 level. I had 120, look, I had 128 marked off before this thing went, it obviously doesn't matter now. So I gotta be thinking about 130 into this, like 131 and a half. Like that would be the dip by zone for me in ARM. Uh, no imbalance that I saw there. ARM is, you know, it doesn't have, it doesn't necessarily always have the greatest volume or spread at the open. Well, spread is a problem. Volume is usually pretty solid. So you gotta be at least a little bit careful. Like if you're going long at 130, it's, you don't want to have a 129.99 stop. Arm's not that kind of a stock. If you do that, you're probably just going to get triggered out all the time. But I do like the support. I do like the 128 if we got it, but I think it's more the 130 to 131 half zone is the next stair up there. Arm up 3.5%. Brendo? Uh, we didn't mention this, but worth a, a note. Anyways, our very own, uh, Canada's very own, Blackberry guys higher here by the tune of 5.5%, teaming up with AMD. Uh, for collaboration on uh, next generation robotic systems for BlackBerry. I didn't look at it, but short. I, I don't, uh, I don't know. Um, you probably have to pay. Yeah, pro no, I don't think you have to pay for shorts for that Actually, one. no, we do. I was, oh, we do, okay. Um, all right, so maybe, I maybe long. Uh, 168 coming in for Apple. I think that that's gonna be a decent level. We'll try that. We had written that down yesterday, 168.50. It was my number one stock yesterday. So let's not throw uh, the baby out with the bathwater here because, um, you know, this is a, a level that we've really liked. So let's just stick with it. We'll wait for it to break 167.50 before we really get too excited uh, about that one. Uh, oh, the other name that we didn't really talk too much about because we didn't get too, too much of a chance with only a minute left, Rivian. I mean, I think Rivian down here near 10 is, is, is worth it. 
So that's another level there that we're going to be looking at. So I do have some bids on Apple. Uh, I'm not really looking at Tesla because I'm looking at Rivian initially. So let's just see if we get a Rivian fill. I'm going to put that bid right there um, at 10, uh, 25 ish. See if we get that fill like we wrote it down on the sticky note. Another level that I like here is Palantir down at 2250. We sort of have been sort of basing in and around that level. These are all just if the market fades back in for the early open. So this is what we're talking about here. Uh, Palantir 2250, so on and so forth. AMD 168, Apple 168, and uh, Rivian 10 and a quarter. So one eighth of one cent is how much it costs to short BlackBerry. That's essentially free for us. But uh, it's got a double top here at 310. Uh, I like pop and fade. So that would be a, a move up and a failure at that 10, and then if it falls back in, that's a decent setup. But you're going to have the orders out there on Google's top of my list as well. As we get the countdown on this Tuesday, post eclipse in three, two, and one. Ring it in there. Thank you very much. Market is open. Immediately, what do we have going on here? No move down for the dip in Google. Uh, somebody might be going nuts. Uh, there, Google, Google actually heading a little bit back to the upside. Okay, we'll have to wait that out. Uh, Tilray, no pop in Tilray. It's kind of chilling out. Now it's starting to get going uh, a little bit on Tilray. Uh, so just, I don't know, I'm not going to adjust my orders on Google. We'll stick to that 55 level. Tilray, I'm looking to short the pop into those 30s. Nothing happening just yet. Don't want to jump out too far in front of it. Uh, Arm holding the 133. So Arm looking strong as it's trying to hold on to the top end of that range. I want to look for the dip buy, but... I'm not going to buy it up here. I don't think you want to get too far away uh, extended at the open. All right, Google's giving me no choice but to buy 156 long. Uh, so there it is, or 157 long. So there it is right there. We'll take a little quick fill here, see if it can start to run up. I mean, we're, you know, it's a really early break. We've talked about early breaks not, you know, being the greatest for this kind of a style of trading. But again, all right, um, we did take the long. You know, like I said, it wasn't a huge position there because of the break factor, but it's fading out now. So maybe this is a pushback into VWAP again. Uh, we said that we'd want to wait for that. So we did take the break. Uh, what is the VWAP there for Google? Uh, 156.40. Okay, so right here, right now. We could take a small piece um, if, if this will happen for us. But here it comes pushing back down in. So again, a nice high break up stop there for Google, but no follow through yet. So we'll have to be patient with it and hope that we do get something. Whoopsies, we get out at 60 there. Well, we're going to put an offer at 80 to get back up to the upside here on Google. But so far, a position that we don't mind in, uh, not in our favor, but Google, a name that we like. So we're in it as it's starting to go backside a little bit right now. And of course, now we are almost positive on the name. So let's see what happens here. Trying to get back up through 157 is Google. High of the day, 157.20. Here comes a fade back again. Yeah, I'm going to look for that higher low. I got 155, but it's showing you 56. So you take what's available to you. Tilray's starting to get close. Arm is gone. 135? Oh, yeah. All right, Arm's not really waiting around. Uh, for anybody here. So the dip now looks like this consolidation into 133-ish. So when ARM gets going, it can go squeeze mode. I'm not saying it goes to 150, but it's done some utter nonsense before. And uh, it's feeling a little nonsensical. See ya, Google. Uh, today. Uh, okay, here we go, guys. We're doing it again on one trade again. Um, so this is what we're talking about right now. It's going to be a big one here to start the day. It's Google. It's the long, and it is fan damn tastic. And it is your sticky note number one trade right there. So here we go, man. Um, we talked about breaking it up. We broke it up. We talked about buying VWAP. We bought VWAP. Um, so here, I mean, this is what it is. You can see the numbers on the board, the results that are putting out themselves. Uh, here goes Google. Let's go. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. That's a hot dog kind of a gun right there again uh, to start the day. There goes Google rocking to the north side. Let's just see how far we can go on this one. It only takes one trade, and it's one for one here so far, uh, but it's very, very early days right now. So we'll take one more piece out uh, of Google because why not? We are now in the money. Mr. Kevin Mendoza, you wanted a dollar winner. Well, we are very, very close to that one. You might as well push that dollar club right now for you. There it is. It is Google. As it was written, play it back to VWAP. And there we go. Nice move right here, right now. Um, one for one to start the day. Yesterday was two for two. I think we were four for five. We slipped up on something at the end of the day. It was a Tesla. Uh, but here we go again. AMD trying to come in to the downside there as well. But that's one more day. Another number on the board. 
Yeah, quick buck as well over here on arm is it sometimes you can only get what it gives you. We wanted the first available dip buy and it ended up being the 134 and a half into 135.5. So we quickly took the buck. Now we're just going to wait for VWAP in here because it's a little bit extended on arm. That's pun sort of intended. Uh, that 33 level will work back into that. NVIDIA is tanking, though. Oh, is it? Okay. NVIDIA is, it just drops $10. So that's going to get me over to the 38 break on uh, Intel, which is already broken. So let's see if we can pick that one up. That happened really, really quick. Hello. I was over in their arm, and when that tanked, I'm like, oh, 38 Intel. Uh, let's go to Adara. Yeah, keep an eye on this rail vision here, RVSN. This one, as you can see here on the daily chart, has run before. We have a float of about 2.65 million shares. 9.2% of that is going to be short float. They also do have a catalyst here securing an order for an AI-powered switchyard uh, system from a rail company in North America. So big move up here. Uh, nice volume here for RVSN, guys. See, yeah, it's probably going nuts. Um, yeah, everything's pulling back in quite nicely right now. And, um, you know, Google did. We still have our targets. 150. I mean, if we get back into 155, let's put, let's put it back up. Uh, but that's Google right now. AMD was a level that I just canceled. It did come into 168. I was looking at that, but then I got a little scared there because Google tanked. I don't, I'm not hearing anything. I'm not seeing anything. But, um, yeah, AMD does fall back in. And it's like you Whoa, mentioned yeah. there, and NVIDIA. One eight sixty five. I don't know if that looks. Yeah, I mean they look the same. Huge move down, both for Nvidia and for AMD right now. As uh, and we we mentioned this, you know, some possible um, air coming out of this balloon that's been here for a minute. But AMD, I feel like is already beat up. It looks like we'll miss an opportunity. We should not have canceled our bid down there. We were at one sixty eight twenty five. We would have been long there. But you know what, man? We are putting that number right back on the board for Google again because it dipped again into where we needed to do that. So we are face slapped the you know what out of ourselves right now as this name goes higher and higher and higher and there goes Google one more time man um, it's going to be early and it's not going to be hopefully too often Google goes back in but there's another big time trade for you and it's another one another on the reload for Google man um, put that one on the board another dollar club winner right there just glad that we're putting some shares into this because again if we're going to sit here and trade we might as well Try to make some money. Google, nice upside move. Yeah, I like Google. I'm going to have the exact same thing as my first note. It never gave the dip into, into the price I wanted for a support level, so I let it show me a level and then make the trade to the top. If it wasn't whatever the nonsense just happened in some of these other names here to the downside, oh, hey. I'd probably give it a chance. But I'm just going to take the higher low into the high of the day and then look for the next available trade. So I'm going to try and ring the register in there because when I look over, NVIDIA is breaking the low of the day and continuing and the last time this happened, it kind of took things with it. Uh, although Apple's looking somewhat strong. So Apple's looking okay in there. I'm gonna double check Meta in a quick little second. I jumped into Intel when I saw that 38 go, and I wanna give it, I wanna be in this until VWAP. Oh. If it breaks VWAP, I'm gonna go into that high of the day and see where that bad boy can go. Someone just said Neil Strong, but I think you gotta look at the chips right now. Chips, and it looks to me like ARM Google. Uh, Tilray's not really doing much of anything, so I'm. Not even thinking about it right now. All right, let's keep going. Just keep going, man. How many times can we hit the dollar club? Maybe two times for Google? Let's go higher than this uh, right now. Wow. Um, like I said, hope, hopefully being able to sit here and um, you know trade this even higher than where we are right now. So uh, big time missed opportunity. I, I sat there and canceled my AMD. AMD's We were, yeah, yeah, we had this. We had this at one, I mean, I canceled it. So it's my bad. We had the order out there, we canceled it, 168.25. We should be long at that very bottom. But I canceled the order, got nervous about it. But you know what, honestly, I mean, as long as Google keeps doing this, we all good, baby. Uh, to the upside, what's up, A? Doing some of these mineral names continuing here. P-A-A-S, Pan American Silver here, up about 5%. Third day in a row to the upside, nice volume here. So keep an eye on silver and gold, guys. Right there, we talked about that exact name on the show yesterday with Michael Noss here, um, and then on the recap show, we talked about Pan American Silver. Uh, again, shout out uh, to Michael Noss, and shout out to everybody, again, trading this Google, man. What, what, a, what an amazing run uh, this name continues to have. It is your number one name here on the sticky note, um, and I just hope that you guys have watched that, been able to hit this with us, um, and again, just a monster, monster trade there. Um, Let's just keep going with Google and wait for AMD to pull back again if we're lucky enough to get that.
AMD is uh, it's gassing, but it's not the other names. NVIDIA is still at the low of the day, so I think something's going on specific to NVIDIA here. I just looked for the, I'm, I'm on the bid for the dip buy in ARM, so we got the first dollar break on ARM, and now we're going for the dip buy. If, if NVIDIA can wick this bottom, I mean, AMD's already doing it. I don't wonder, yeah, but at the same time, AMD's about to turn. If AMD takes out the top, I want to see if we can get a sympathy play in NVIDIA, if we can catch it off the low. But I don't want to get caught in the turn where AMD shifts to the downside all of a sudden, and then you're trying to get into uh, Intel. Uh, oh, shoot, uh, Amazon. But uh, I wanted to mention this silly BlackBerry. I said if it failed a top break, I was going to go into the short. It has not failed a top break. It's actually holding a consolidation. I still do want to be short this name, but I'm going to let it calm down a touch. Uh, this is actually up 10% now and uh, holding above that high. So it has to fail this top break or I'm not going to be shorting uh, BlackBerry. I'll let it calm down. I think it will come down eventually. All right, one more. Um, let's just take one more out here at 45 if we're lucky enough to get it. And of course we are. Um, and let's look for some more trades. Let's see what else is popping around here. We've got bank earnings coming in the next couple days as well. Uh, so we can d double check on uh, some of the temperature here with JP Morgan, uh, 197 and change. So we, we had identified this as a possible trade for us in and around 200. Um, so maybe, it, maybe, maybe for that, Still watching Google, it's still a dollar in. It's just, it's having a hard time at this 157.50 level there. Yeah, let's just stick with what we're doing, man. We've been really nailing some of these trades for you guys. So let's just try to be as specific as we can. We're out a lot here. Like once we broke above and we started to get, get some of these highs, I mean, this, this is a lot of our outs in the 30s right here, a lot of them. Not even that many here at the highs. So we've been really sort of proud of how we traded this name. Took that break, held it, did not get scared, did not get punched out, really believed in the trading. And that's what's, I, I can't say that enough. It's just believe in your trades and stick with them and use more shares because that's the whole point. Look, look, look what's happening right here. AMD, again, this is another example that we just didn't, we should have st stuck with what we were talking about. I still do like though, I wrote down here 173 long break potentially for AMD as well. So um, this could be a trade that we look at here on a break for AMD at 173 long. Let's just continue to watch Google and see if that one will sing uh, even more than where we are right now. Apple's starting to, well, Apple's continuing to break out here looking pretty decent. Uh, like we were talking about some Microsoft and some Meta, but it looks like Apple is going to be the strong one. NVIDIA is doing its best to try to get back above some support here at 865. If AMD is going to go, I do feel like NVIDIA has no business down here. Intel's actually holding the 38 level. So if, if the market does turn, the market's strong, Intel's underneath. Um, afternoon support, it's underneath the pre-market highs, so I want to stick with this one to the south side. Until it proves otherwise, I like Intel for that short. As mentioned, BlackBerry is starting to fail the top. I don't know if I want to engage just yet. I'll give it a couple more ticks. And Tilray, I've moved down on Tilray into the 20s. Tilray can't seem to get past 225. So I'm going to short this one into, the, into this pre-market high, which is actually 27s. All these wicks are dark pool wicks. Tilray has not broken 227. That is that high. So I'm going to short the 20s into 27, Adara. Yeah, we talked about these briefly in the pre-market, but these Chinese EV names still really strong. Xpeng up about 7.5% right now, XPEV. NIO, NIO also up about 5%. So nice look for a lot of these Chinese EVs, guys. Rivian's at 1050. Yeah. I mean, guys, we can't, honestly, we can't really get them all. We talked about a Rivian dip in there to 10.25. It only dips to 10.38, trying to go. Let's look at Tesla right now. Um, okay, so just, just quickly as an update, we have about 15% left of our Google. That's it. Maybe even a little bit less than that. Waiting for another tick near 158. I'm actually going to put an order up there uh, just to offer it out, see if we get it up in this, near the 70s. We'll see if we can get that. All right, Tesla on a little bit. I mean, I'm waiting for things to break and for something to like hold or, you know, just looking for different levels. So we are getting something up here on Meta. It's just, I think we want to stay with the long bias right now. So I, like, you know, not much for, to do here. We talked about Meta would probably be a nothing burger for me. And if it was anything, it would be a short. So that, I feel like that was a missed opportunity up there at 525 or so uh, to short that off that level right there. So a uh, possible thing right now. Um, just a quick check. Yeah. So. Intel's right here at 38. Uh, we're not too, too nervous about that. Uh, there is an Intel, there's a keynote for Gelsinger coming up pretty soon. Yeah, it was a two day um, event. 87, 20, 87. I was looking at Starbucks here too, because it looking like it wants to break down below 87. 
coming up right now, 87 and change. Uh, yeah, okay. Um, this has been this has been hit as well. Lululemon, Nike, Starbucks, some of these Chinese names starting to get down into the downside. Still waiting for something to happen with um, Google. Still waiting for something to happen with AMD. Check back in on Nvidia. On Nvidia, that's been a wow. Eight sixty two. That wasn't that the bottom uh, that day when we were going nuts over here. I thought it was sixty. Um, yeah, it was in and around there. Yeah, look at that. Sixty two. Wow, nailed that. Uh, right there, 60, 61, 62, perfect bottom, wow. All right, so watch out to see if we can break those levels as well. Maybe AMD's a net short here as this market pulls back down. Um, one more out of Google because why not? There it is, we will take that as we get a little nervous as this market pulls back in here. Let's find some names that we like long. Apple, potentially um, Rivian, AMD. Well, Intel's starting to come back. It just got into the 90s, so back underneath that, like I guess it's a post-market low or the afternoon low, 37.90 is where we're starting to get out after yesterday's bottoms. So we'll get some more out at the 80s and then 70s and all the way back into the downside. Uh, Jeppy in the chat asking why SMCI is ripping. I don't know, why did, why did AMD rip? Why did ARM rip? Like it just, I mean, stocks are going to do what, whatever they want. NVIDIA is the one that's relatively weak. And I feel like going, man. Darn, we should have we played Apple more on that dip, uh, unfortunately. Well, it's coming. It might give... Yeah, Look, Apple has a chance to give VWAP here off of yesterday's highs, which would be 169.10. So that looks pretty solid in here. Like this little level at 169.10 to get it in front of 169. So I'm going to pop on the bid as we go to the desk for the Dara. Yeah, we actually had another TSM story right before the open here. So Digital Times reporting that according to some sources at their fab tool makers, the company's making some progress towards its new process generations, things going according to plan. So just a bit of an update here from Digital Times, uh, potentially explaining this, this nice move up here in TSM. Wow, it's not fucking rocket science. Uh, okay. Um, Let's just see what's happening here on, on pullbacks. We did, like, we did like to look at Rivian as well at some point. 10.45 and change coming through. NVIDIA, AMC, Shopify, Square maybe as a possibility as well. Nah, not much happening right there. Um, okay, so maybe Apple might be one of the only ones pulling back down into 169. So uh, that could be something coming yeah. through at some point as well for us. So um, a few different things to look at. I'm glad that we sort of were able to get out of the majority of our Google right there. Uh, but after that, yeah. Not much for me right now. I'm still looking, man. You guys mentioned Uber. I mean, look, I would love to look at Uber. I am looking at Uber yeah. right now. It's just we need, I feel like I need some catalysts that are a little bit more than this. Like, I can't, there's not much to do here, whether or not we break higher or lower. I wrote down there on the sticky note today, like, literally, I, I, I don't, you know, sometimes it sounds obviously like a broken record. That's still pretty cool. Uh, but we wrote down right here that we wanted to do 18.4 on NASDAQ, and that was the big level for us. Well, that's just right where we went to and right where we turned around on the NASDAQ. So we nailed that as well. Look, here's 18.4. What, what's up with that? You know, right there, boom, right down there, 25 damn handles. No Arun, no problem because another one. it's another one for you. Another one. I mean, there it is, right? Another so, one. I mean, downside move here, um, you know, in the futures. Uber doing nothing. So we got to be very, very specific and try to make trades that we really think are the right ones because I'm here to make money. It's chips. Not just put on a show, okay? It's got about chips, man. Like the chips and like some of the big cap tech names. Like Tilray, Tilray may be like 15%, but it's not, it's like sitting inside of a range. I'm going to get to BlackBerry in a second, but Intel just broke the low and it's heading lower here. So the short definitely working on that one, heading to flush zone. I think you could, now that you flat bottom broke this, the next stop, and maybe it's not today, it's the 30, you get to that 200 period moving average and you're through it, there's a trend line that's been here for a year that gets you to $36 on Intel. And I think that's gonna be the next level to the downside eventually. But I, if this market's turning around, then I said I wanted the short on BlackBerry. Part of it has to do with this level, support, flat bottom break, resistance at 320. Any ideas where the top was today? 322. So if it breaks the top, I lose. But I'm going to jump on the offer here. Maybe even get a midpoint on uh, BlackBerry. See if we can't get something. Give it to that 22 high. Yeah, great deal. Robotics, blah blah blah, with AMD. But up 10 percent. If the market flushes, I'll take my shot at a retracement it, because it's at that 320 level on the daily. 
Yeah, I'm putting an offer there for Intel as well. I really like that play as well. What's up to Boring Man? You are welcome, my guy, uh, for that. I just hope that we're able to all make some money uh, on some of these levels that we're talking about. That's what it's all about for me. Um, and if you guys are making money, then you're making money. We have one trade on uh, today, and it was a monster. So I just hope that you guys had some of that as well. And then whatever you guys had on as well, I hope was uh, good. I know Arm today, uh, Neil looked at that. It's really moving around, um, taking out. I didn't, I wasn't so excited about the long on Arm, but it did fall in again. And look at that 135, right? I mean, no matter what we think or what we like, you have to sort of, as, as I heard Neil mention before, trade the price action. And we lo we're looking at chip names. So you want to look at ARM probably as well as ARM continues uh, to be one of those names again here today um, that is just making that move lower and pretty aggressively. Like it's down now 0.4 and the market is still green. So we have some downside pressures coming here uh, for sure with names like ARM. So let's just continue to watch out to see if there is a bottom at some point on this name uh, for ARM. We'll try to buy it back up. I mean, I don't think, whoops, that's the Bitcoin chart there. We have the 50 period right here around 127. That could be a possibility uh, for me here on ARM. But that's what we're looking at right now. ARM possibly has a downside push into 127. Because the market's getting worse and worse, we may get that next opportunity to fight our devil again down here with AMD. So we'll see if there's something pushing uh, lower here for AMD and we'll be able to buy that 168 one more time. Google on a possible pushback as well, but we nailed that 18.4. Like, as I said, that's a 70 handle winner uh, right there. So props it up. Um, it allowed me to get out of some of the Google up there and it really allowed me to take no more longs. So, you know, waiting out for this to sort of settle down now. We'll see if we can find some more levels. But for now, we're just going to be happy sitting in this and possibly buying Google on a retracement back in. Yeah, I got the VWAP retrace here on, on uh, Apple. We're looking for that 169.10, so bought some 15s in there. If we are turning around in the market and we don't hold the breakout price, if you don't hold that breakout, I think you're probably headed toward the lows. I'm in two shorts. BlackBerry may or may not care about the market. Intel probably will. But if you bounce off of that, to me, that sets up almost exactly like the Apple trade. So if you like Apple, then the NASDAQ is showing you the same thing. Get the resistance, pull back. If prior resistance holds, I think you can retest some of those highs. So Apple looking solid. BlackBerry was the newest position. That was a looking for a failed break. Wix that 320 level, get short underneath. First out in front of VWAP if we're able to get it. Uh, Intel's still holding right around that 37 half zone. Every 50 cents is usually a thing on Intel when you're playing it. Yesterday, there's 39, or two days ago, 39 into 38 half at the bottom, and then 38 half into 38. So just going 30, uh, 38 into 37 half. And if it bounces off 37 half, I'd probably jump out of the trade. So you gotta. You sort of play, if you're a range bound trader, just play the range and try to respect it. So Intel, once again, looking like a little bit of a, a doggy dog uh, in, in this market. I think it was sort of an easier short uh, taking that one than maybe looking at an NVIDIA, which kind of went out of nowhere. But Intel, we knew the level we liked at that 38 from yesterday. Yeah, we're not going to try to average too much into this one. We got a little bit of FOMO there with AMD. Just thought that maybe we had missed that bottom right there, but I'm not going to hold it too far past a break below 170 right now. We're long at 170 and a quarter. So 25, I mean, 25 cents on AMD, come on. Uh, but we'll see if it can get back up to the upside again here. Uh, if it fails, it fails, man. Uh, all right, well, we just made a move right back up there to flat. Oh, wait a second, cancel that. Where's my AMD offer? All right, um, we're, we're waiting in the 40s and 50s, but again, a little bit more of a break here as we're gonna get out. It's trying to hold, the market is trying to hold, but I'm not so sure these ship names are. Um, AMD down point two. I just thought this was worth a little bit of a risk here um, just to see if this wants to bounce back up. We're long right here right now at 170.19 off of a little bit of a reload down there. Come on, AMD, you can really make a difference here today if you go. Um, so let's see if this wants to get going to the upside right here. Um, if it does good, we'll get some out. We talked about where we're waiting. Maybe we should wait something in the teens, get something out for flat, but it's not going for right now. And here it goes. Okay, come on, AMD. Maybe we can get this going back up. Uh, Before we go to a Derek, yeah, DX, go ahead. DXYZ yes. is going to halt at $73 any second now. Yeah, that's a, that's uh, a So scam. watch out for that. It's down 27%. Um, going into what's probably a volatility hole for five or ten minutes uh, to the desk of the Dara. Keep an eye on Lucid here. We did get those uh, delivery numbers produced. 
1,728 vehicles delivered, uh, 1,967 vehicles. They also announced they're going to be re reporting earnings after the close on May 6th. That's a Monday. So uh, some updates here for LCID, guys. All right, always nice to have Sharif behind, beside me, man. He's congratulating on the trades. Look at Google right here, man. 158. Let's go. That's the face slapper of the day uh, right there. So, But we can make a hell of a lot of money, too, on AMD if it goes. But um, I kind of changed my mind. Uh, we, just got, we just got out of half of this position as we got right back up to this area. We said, hey, you know what? If we're able to put something on the board, let's do it right now. Um, and we're basically flat on AMD, so let's wait to see what happens here. If it rips, it rips. If not, we have our target to get out. Um, because we just did this damage on Google, I mean, honestly, this has been one of those days one more time here. Um, and it just keeps on happening. So glad to be having you tune in. Please hit the like, the damn subscribe, and let's get this party started. Oh my God, there's Sharif. This is what we're talking about. If you're here to do this and make a little bit of money and have a little bit of fun, then this is exactly what you're here for. It is Trader TV Live, and there it goes one more time. I, I'm tired of, again, I, these are the trades I'm putting on. You can see the entries. You can see the exits. It is what it is. I'll see everybody on the other side. And the other side is looking absolutely fantastic. BlackBerry does what yeah, BlackBerry cool. does as it just broke down through VWAP. You can't tell me the market's going to pull back and this stock's going to maintain the high. So we got the short consolidation. Like I said, first out, not till VWAP. You're short the 16s. Ideally, you're going to get some 17s and 18s in there. But I actually had to cross down to pick up a midpoint. So I, it's, I have 15 half as the midpoint. That's the best fill we were able to get. I think you can get back down into the three even level here. It's just going to be a different type of stock. We do want to respect Tilray. I thought that was going to be the one today. Yes, sir. The only downside of Tilray is, whoops, there you go. Uh, like I said, it's going to be SSR, so on the way back in, when you're trying to get a short, like you have to sit on the offer, and sometimes you're just not going to get the fill. So I want to be short off of this high. It is breaking lower. I'll look for a VWAP or trace to maybe get into this. Just be careful. It's short sell restricted. It could be making a bounce off that $2 level at some point. Let's check back in on the one long here, because Apple, like Apple's holding VWAP. I got some out just past the dime, and... It's not looking as strong as things were earlier. If it can't hold on to 169, this might end up being a bit of a short day. Uh, thankfully, in a couple of short positions. But if we don't hold this bid, uh, Apple, one of the stronger names this morning, you might have to back off and wait for the 168, which has got to be a separate trade uh, for me. Just wait for that price. Oh, goodness, Coinbase, I totally forgot about. Doesn't matter. Coin down 4%. I like the short, but hey, I like the short at 260. Stock's high was 254 at the open, so nowhere near it. I still think this is a good fade potential play. It's just a matter of waiting for a level. You don't have to rush into it. 250 was yesterday's bottom. Maybe we can pick this up on the way back into 250 if it's going to stair step down. If it's a trend down day, let's try to follow the trend. If Intel breaks 3750 again, I'm going to put the trail in. Every 50 cents on Intel, you know how we roll. That's right. Uh, I can check back on that intel. Um, all right, so AMD is rolling again, um, but it's rolling lower, so we'll have to wait to see what does happen. We just keep on, oh man, oh man. Uh, all right, we just got a huge bid down there, um, and for some reason it filled us up, so we will be getting this out uh, upside if we can. There it is, some tens and so on and so forth. We are long at 90s right now on this name. I want to thank absolutely everybody for watching. Let me see how many likes uh, we have right here because we don't do this often enough. And whenever we do, we absolutely crush it. Obviously, I got to refresh this because we don't have 73 likes uh, right now. Let me, well, maybe we do. Let me go uh, and figure this out. Oh no, it's going to show an ad. Uh, no, it's not. Okay, that's good. Um, I don't know why this isn't uh, updating, but there it is right there. Hit the like, hit the subscribe. Looks like we have 800 likes right now with over 7,200 watching. So hit the like, hit the subscribe. Let's see if we can get these numbers a little bit higher. Uh, thank you again so much for watching. And it's been um, another big one. There it is. We get dropped out on AMD. AMD falls through there, that 170 level. As I'm guessing now, we're not going to hold these levels there on AMD. Uh, but for now, 170, again, a pretty good target there. We were talking about looking at this level. We did it, we traded it, and then eventually that last reload fell a little bit on its face there. So AMD having a little bit of a problem, going red right now, I guess off that 170. I feel like the best trade uh, would be a short now in this name 
uh, possibly against 170. I'm trying to find out where is this view up right there. 17020, something like that, maybe for a short for AMD. But the market's still bouncing around here, so I'm not overly convinced. But I'm more leaning towards a short now than a long on this name. Yeah, and I, look, I just got out of Intel on the bid, so I'm going to take it. I'm taking Apple out here as it crests the top. So into VWAP, into the high of the day will ring register. And then Intel just bounced off that 37 and a half. Now I'm thinking back into VWAP on Intel. Sometimes you play the range bound trade. You've seen it before. I'll go range bound and then it just flushes another half dollar. Uh, other times it looks like a perfect out and we get VWAP. Just trade your own particular style. I like to pull back into VWAP when it's at support. So I'm going to look for that in the 75 to 80 range. Uh, over there on INTC. BlackBerry, we're still in. BlackBerry from New York. There we go. It just made another push down uh, through VWAP. It was able to get it at 06. I'm thinking three bucks. It started at $3, so we get most of it out into three. And if it happens to go red, that would be at about 290. So I'm going to get another leg out in front of three and then hold the last piece to see if it completely gives it up and turns entirely red on BB. Still no Tilray for me, but that's okay. What's up, Adara? You have this buy pretty much flat on the day right now here for the S&P 500. Initially a little bit stronger, but certainly trading weaker as we get into that first half hour of the day. Market definitely awaiting these uh, economic indicators we have coming up the next two days. CPI and on Wednesday and PPI on Thursday, both on watch. We had some AI-related headlines earlier today with Meta, Google and Microsoft certainly to keep an eye on. So lots of mega cap news, but some interesting stocks trending today, including Moderna, MRNA up eight and a half percent. Pretty strong volume here. No news that I can see on this, but lots of excitement on social media. We also did have some positive test news for Pfizer, PFE, so it could be trading positively in sympathy. Nice look here, though, regardless for MRNA. We also have some of these Chinese EVs, particularly XPeng, XPEV. Pretty, uh, XPEV, sorry, pretty strong on the day. So certainly some interesting names to keep an eye on that are, are running as the market tends to trade pretty flat ahead of this economic data, guys. All right, guys. Moderna flat top break 116. Yeah, I like that Moderna uh, look for sure. Um, okay, so here we go. Google still breaking through that 158. So this name continues to uh, make a little bit of a move here uh, in the AM. So we'll still stay on that one. AMD, we're trying to get a little bit short here um, on AMD up to that 170 level. But look, I've just mentioned this to the main man himself in the back. I am very, very proud to have second place today because Brankles right now, he gets the leaderboard. So shout out to Brankles, the office manager. And then hovering up in third place, Mark. So there's a new name as we go. Congratulations, up, it's, it's Brankles. Uh, myself, Mark, so congratulations to Mr. Mark. What up, Mark, uh, as we go. And of course, we do this because we want to let everybody know that you can join Real Trading. Um, come over to the screen right here, realtrading.com. Uh, join it up, get onto a trading floor, and be lucky enough to be trained by the leader of the pack, Mr. Brankles, over there on the desk. So congratulations, my guy, on that one. We will still be looking for some more trades, obviously, as we go here. Um, but we will be looking at AMD in and around 170 coming through very, very soon there um, for AMD as the market is bouncing and AMD is not really. It's just, I told, remember when it was, remember when this was a $1 winner and I said that hopefully we'd be able to hit this twice? We're 20 cents away from doing that right now. Yo, what's up, Top VoIP? Bro, they clearly missed the Tesla move, bro. Um, yeah, I don't know why we're ignoring it. We'll look at Tesla. Not I mean, I mean uh, like I said, I'm here to make my. I wanted 112, like I wanted a 171, I'm not gonna lie. Um, oh, I disconnected again. Uh, once, I wanted a 171 dip buy on Tesla. That was my plan of action, and it just completely broke it out. So I was looking dips, and when the market came in, sometimes you think, oh, you're gonna get your dip buys. And it was a breakout play. And you heard me say I wasn't favoring breakouts uh, today. So every long has been a dip buy, and then the shorts have paid off that we've had. So it, and again, in the moment, in the first 30 minutes, you're gonna be trading the stocks that, that hit the levels. But uh, shout out to anyone that actually grabbed that Tesla. Uh, I like the long, and no questions asked. It just didn't come in for the setup that I wanted. I just watch out for 180. I still think this 180, the channel bottom that we've been in, 
needs to be respected. That's a lot of resistance and the 50 period. So if Tesla gets to 20, I'd actually be thinking fade. But from there, it's, it's a pretty good return uh, on that long. All right, I'm just congratulating Brankos here. Um, all right, uh, there it is. All right, what's up? Uh, there it is. Okay, um, yeah, uh, that's it. Okay, so Tesla, back to Tesla. There it is. There's the $2 winner uh, right there for your sticky note. Top trade uh, of the day again. Um, Tesla, all right, so let's just have a quick look because of this. Wow, yeah. Oh, wow. Um, all right, so we've liked that 168 level, but this is up two and a bit. I think we got to just push longs here again today for sure. Um, I, I said this yesterday on the recap show, or it was on the afternoon show uh, yesterday, was we're really excited for this 180 break. So Tesla coming up to 180 here. I was like, let's get some catalyst going through for this 180 break. And I was pretty... I wasn't wrong about it, but earlier on today when we asked about it on the, on the first part of the show, I said that Tesla was kind of in the middle here, and I still think it is. We, remember I said the one break that you could play? It was the very first stock that we talked about. I said you could take this 174.50 break or whatever it was. Well, if you took that, I mean, you're now in the money three bucks. So I remember we were talking about breakouts. Um, and I said, you know, I like them, but you got to be very, very specific. We liked it on Google. Obviously, we nailed that one uh, crazy. But Tesla would have been another huge breakout a trade there. Congratulations, um, VoIP in the chat that brought this to our attention before because there it goes. It's Tesla, and it is beautiful uh, off those 160 bottoms, man. I mean, Tesla really starting to make it sing. And like I said, I was talking with my kids about this, about the robo-taxi. I really like the idea, and I think that's what's happening right now. We talked about this even on the podcast, that we don't have too much love for cars anymore, it seems. Like, my kids are like... You know, like my 22-year-old doesn't even think about having a car. They take Ubers everywhere. Uh, as long as you're living in the city, work, live environment is what everybody wants uh, at that age. So I forget really about just the city. The applications, like even in the even in the freaking like if you take like I take a I take a train in, and I'm five minutes from the station. Yeah. I literally bought a car so I can drive five. Like, why would I do that? Like I can literally just have it come to my house in the right. morning, pick me up, and drive me the the few minutes to the station every single day. When I get back from the game, it's the same kind of nonsense. And the, the applications are great. My only concern with it is, are you actually getting a real announcement in August 8th? Or is it one of those dates that you set up and then it's a bit of a disappointment? Right. Um, but we'll find out. We'll find out. The Tesla's absolutely fantastic today. Um, you got to love, oh my goodness, NVIDIA's going again. I am at VWAP and I thought we'd get a re-entry into Intel up here. NVIDIA is deciding to break out the low of the day. I'm just going to double check SMCI. Oh, that's Gonzo. Uh, that's, this is going to be 900 here on SMCI. So my, the lesson I learned the other day when I had the good trade on SMCI was not to take the breakdown, but to let it shake out and then try and get a consolidation short because the actual break is nasty in terms of spread. So if I'm looking short on SMCI, it has to be something on like a push back up or uh, more of a calm uh, trade. BlackBerry has not given me another out just yet. It's really the reload short intel that I want to grab here. And I keep saying NVIDIA is breaking the low, but I don't actually show you guys. It's through 860. No, that low wasn't, that, this closed 858. Why did I think 861? No, that low on the cash card was 858. So the flat bottom break is actually not 60. It would be 858 right here on NVIDIA. If it pops, I'm looking to short Intel on the pop. I feel like that's the one I want. Just writing out right now um, about this trade on Google. Um, yeah, anything else you guys want me to look at here on the chat? I mean, I'm willing to do that obviously for you uh, as we can go. Thank you so much uh, to the VoIP and to Adam Deleuze uh, and to everybody in the chat. It does, it does obviously mean a lot to all of us uh, here that you guys continue to support the show and your kind words are exactly that, very, very kind. Um, I want to look at SMH because why not? SMH is breaking lower right now, as Neil has mentioned. It's too bad that we wanted to switch over to our short for AMD. We just never got filled there at 170, but we did talk about flipping that over on SMH, uh, sorry, on AMD, and maybe SMH could have been that key as well. Look at that 224. We came in, we danced a little bit there at 224.50, and then now just continue uh, to fall into some of these levels one more time into the 20 period. Wow, the NASDAQ is really, really uh, giving this up right now. So, um, okay, here we go. Uh, we should be getting out of some Google here if we don't hold. 
So if we don't hold 158, we might as well just get the heck out of Google right now. Now $2 in the money. It did go a lot more than that, uh, but we're, it, it's fading out right now. 158, let's just get out of Google. You know, our stops on this are so ridiculously low right now that it doesn't really matter, but so far so good here for Google. Let's put a stop, breaking back down below 158. So there it is, 157, 97. Let's just do that dance down there and get out um, if it breaks lower because we always say this on the show is that you have winners until they turn out to be losers. So just be very, very careful. The market like, like AMD, you know, we could celebrate this long, but then if we don't get out right here when it breaks below this 170, then right now you're like, uh, yeah, about all those wins, we've now like tripled them in the loss column. So just be very careful. You are bouncing off 169 right now. Maybe the bigger one, I know you're in... It's all, out of only, Intel, but I'm only we were in, in Intel, yeah. in BlackBerry. But there's NVIDIA. This is the one that's really coming in. Watch out for 850. I'm guessing this is a smash uh, for me at 850 to the downside. Just a matter of can we hold. Wow, I mean, we're right here at this bottom as well from yesterday or from three days ago. 855, that's that bottom that we had. But uh, uh, You might get 850 at the same time SMCI breaks 900. At well, that makes sense. It, it, and it's, it could be simultaneous. SMCI is it. Excuse me. Uh, nine, it was just bounced off 901. It's at 902, right when NVIDIA is at this low as well, 855. Oh, that's going to be a crowded trade. I mean, to pick one or the other, I feel like it's NVIDIA because SMCI spreads are just a little bit crazier. But it's a good level either way. If we can just get back into Intel, like this, I feel like if NVIDIA takes out that bottom, it's going to be kaputs getting into this short on a retracement. But I don't want to step too far away from. VWAP, so I'm just going to see if I can wet the beak. Give me 70s in here. And we'll wet the beak. It's a VWAP trade, but let's give it a little bit of room to run. Uh, Manuel saying a VWAP retracement on Moderna. You know, if the market's this weak and the chip names are flushing, so there's that 116 I yelled out. That's because of this on the daily. If you can't see 116 on the daily, there you go. Uh, but on a pullback, yeah, VWAP retracement. Maybe you got to be somewhere other than tech if you're looking for strength, unless it's Google or Apple. Apple and Google are strong. Clearly, you've got some strength in Moderna. I heard someone say Pfizer's doing, having a good day, but Moderna is the big boy, up 8.5%. If it can hold VWAP, that could be a nice little trend trade. But I just jumped into Intel, and the current excitement would, well, I guess it's excitement if you're looking short, uh, would be NVIDIA 850 and SMCI 900. Although you're getting a bit of a bounce now, so I guess we'll have to calm down. You get excited about a break, and what usually happens? Yeah, it goes the other It bounces way. off the level. Like, how many times do we say that about... Rivian, like the fail for Rivian was waiting for it to break 10 and then watching it bounce off 10 two days in a row and you could have had some great scalp longs. Yeah, we're going to try, um, we'll try some Amazon here. Just trying the long in Amazon. So we'll see. So let's see if it fills up anything. We are long right now on Amazon. So we're long on Google. Google could come out. We already sort of know that deal. Let's take a piece on Amazon if we can get a dime or so. We're long at 07s. Let's see if we can get back up to the upside just for a little bit here on Amazon. Um, and then we will. Would love a coffee. Yes, thank you, Mr. Randy Man. Uh, back there. How do I and have we'll, we'll get that ready. So here we go. We are long Amazon. Just trying to bounce off of 186 or so. I like the name. It's up today. We've really hit Amazon pretty good the last couple of days. So we'll kind of put some good money here um, on this and see what happens. Okay, we just got up to 15s. We did not get anything out. Google just came down there. That's, hmm, why did that just happen for Google? Uh, all right, well, we are out of Google. Um, once again, that is the face slapper of the day uh, right there for Google. But right now, I guess we just turn our attention to Amazon and we'll think about Google a little bit lower because that was a strange one. What's up, Adara? Any stock to keep an eye on here, Selena, uh, S-L-N-A. This one currently about 45% after its co-founders uh, and other management team increasing their equity stake in the company as of yesterday. So nice move up here for S-L-N-A. Selena with a move. Someone just said in the chat there, have a look at MU, a relative strength. I know it's up 0.7, but at the lows of the day, I think you pick your poison in the chip space at this moment. Like if you're like I'm trading Intel and my eyeballs are locked into NVIDIA here in case we get a bit of a move. So you do want to pick your poison with the chips. Some like the strength in Apple, like I got out at that high when the market was at the lows. And I think we're just going to go back to VWAP. Oh, like look, it's riding VWAP here. Oh, so if we do get a pullback, I think you got to look at, obviously VWAP as it trends up is going to move higher. And I just want to be moving with it. 
So every couple of minutes or so, I find myself kind of canceling my starter bid and, and moving it a little bit higher, but it's because I'm following VWAP on the three minute chart, which sits at 163, sorry, 169.30 uh, currently on Apple. Strong name, but Tesla, like I said, like 180 is that level on the daily chart. So if it gets to 180, and then you look up here, pull up your 15 minute as well, if it gets to 180, this is where it's turned before. So you have these wick highs, 181 and a half, I think you let it get into that before looking for a short. What's BlackBerry doing? I mean, it's holding around that three, but it's not exactly falling like a rock in BlackBerry. It's pulled back off that fail break at the top, but it's not really flushing through three. I guess I'll need to get something out in the six, seven range again. All right, there we go. Um, and uh, we have another one. All right, there's Amazon. So there it goes, right up there to the upside, man. We just, we talked about buying that. There it is. We're long at 08. It's now 30 cents in the money. And the pole position is back uh, right now. So we'll see. Uh, me and Brank will go back and forth there. Max for, ste for stepping uh, over there on the bridge. So we'll have to see if we can hold that out uh, right now. Can we short coin? Let's have a quick look. Come on, Amazon. Let's go. We have the ability. Uh, to yeah, but remember, yeah, exactly. Oh, we have the ability to short coin. Okay. Well, we have the ability to make a little bit of money right now, so let's props it up to Amazon as there that goes to the upside. Let's look at coin. We looked at that. Thanks for asking in the chat. Okay, so 250. We were actually looking at potentially a higher play at 260, right? Um, there's crypto. I, I actually, what I was thinking about was I was looking at monster, uh, not monster, uh, micro strategy. First of all, uh, issue abound here. We are 50 cents in the money right now on Amazon, but that's not the problem. The problem is we have a new entrant into the building, um, and that is going to be Intel. So I am now in Intel right now for the first time. Let's see if we take a little piece out here just for a little bit. There it goes. Let's go, man. We are now short at 84s on Intel. So we'll see if another we can put one. this one into another oh, spot for us right now another. as we just keep on stacking it up right now again. So here comes Intel bringing it back down into the bottoms here. Let's see if that is the case. Well, we can scalp it out a little bit uh, as we go right here. This is the, again, the benefit of trading a little bit more shares, being able to get in and out of your trades. When quick profit is there, thank you, Randy, uh, you do want to make it. And that's the best part about this market, in my opinion. There's lots of opportunities. Um, just you know, hold out if you like the longs. Um, you'll probably get a bounce and hold out if you like the shorts. Just pick the right names um, and then you shall, trust me, be rewarded with that. So let's wait to see. We'll take a little bit of profit here on Intel um, and then just see if we can get back up to the high side. I wasn't sure if we would break this VWAP, but we did and we take that opportunity on a nice move up there Tesla's getting real. to short. Tesla's getting real, real. It's 79 now. It's, it gets really, really pressing. There isn't even a red candle since about 940 on a three minute chart. So it's getting real heavy up here. Remember I said 180 is that spot with a 181-ish uh, wick top. So it needs to press the 180 level before it gets, like, if you're gonna stand in front of it, I think you wanna give it some room and you wanna let it get into that 180 level before you start fighting it too hard. Uh, Tesla looking super, super ridiculous, actually ridiculously strong. It looks like it was a bounce play on Nvidia and SMCI, unfortunately. So you look for the break. And both of those names are absolutely flying now, like 900 to 910 and 850 to 859. So if you're going to look for the fade, VWAP sits way too high on NVIDIA, 865. Apple, no pullback yet in Apple. It's still holding the top. I think I want to wait for it. And now i got to think about the halves because the higher it goes or the longer it does volume up here. Like I said, moving target on VWAP. So 169 half is the new one. Oh, we didn't even talk about these. Uh, that's right, NEO and 9% up on NIO. Uh, so NEO, there was some positive-ish comments from Yellen with regards to China and EVs. That, that's, that was the story. I don't, it wasn't anything ridiculously specific, but I think all of the Chinese EV names were up, and NEO is right at that big 480 level. So this is 40. The last time it was here was a huge fade. It was support level. Oh, goodness. Yeah, if the market bounces, it is what it is. That 480 level is a fade to me. Like the last time it was up here, I think I missed this opportunity. So I'm going to try to wet the beak. Uh, 480 big level on Neo. Not up 9%, but it was some offhand comments from Janet Yellen 
that basically boosted every single Chinese EV name, and it was very unspecific. Like, it wasn't like, hey, everything is good. They're still going to slap Terrace on these bad boys. Let's be real. Slap. Uh, I'm going to be getting out of Intel if we break through 90. Because honestly, I only wanted this short underneath VWAP. So we, you know, we got that spike up. We were playing off of this level right there, 84. That's, I mean, that's why we're here. Um, our best fill was 76, I believe, which happened, yep, 76. So we have, all we have right now is 77, 76, and 80s. So it's not like we're necessarily like lighting this on fire or anything here um, with Intel. It's actually flat. So we'll have to wait and try to be as patient as I said we can be here with INTC. Um, Amazon did go up to the upside. We only, we have about 15% left of Amazon right now. So it's not a huge position anymore. We got right into that. That was a key out for me, 186.40 into that high of the pre-market. Obviously we had that huge move up and we were holding something for the dream, which I will continue to do every day. So watch out for that kind of a continuation play for me. Uh, but Intel, again, that's the only one there. Well, and, oh, we missed Google. I think we might have missed Apple as well on a little bit of a pullback. I know the youth Nvidia. had it. What, did it break? I'm not even over so there. It, so it broke the low. It broke the 55 yeah. low and was like instantly oh, 53. 55. Like the 55 break was instantly like two. It hasn't broken 50 yet though. Um, SMCI, did it break 900? No, we haven't broken 900. The spread is stupid on SMCI when it breaks levels. I don't know. The, last, like the, the, the other day, I took a breakdown trade in SMCI and lost five bucks, took a consolidation trade, and it made 19 because the spread is stupid when you take the break. And like the first retracement was like $7. And it's like, ah, do I want to hold it $7 against me? So I'm not going to take a breakout on breakdown on SMCI. Uh, we'll wait for something to happen here on NVIDIA. Oh, Meta? Was that Meta? breaking? Uh, no, Meta already broke that flat bottom. You liked 17. Meta was 19. Did it break 19? Oh, I thought you said, ah! Oh, it was 19. I oh, thought you said look at that break. Oh, bye, bye, bye. You have that, Patrick? Oh. The 19 break is nasty. We talked about that 19 break. This was right on, oh, that's frustrating. Ugh. We talked about that night. I mean, I went over this over and over and over when we had Meta AI, Google AI, Apple AI, all that. I was like, oh man, this 519 is what we want. Oh, nice move to the downside right there. Congratulations again. And thanks uh, to Neil and everybody in the chat for pointing that one out because wow, oh, too bad. Missed opportunity I there. No, it wasn't me. People are yelling it in the chat. I just no, but that was that. a good level. I mean, whatever. Either way, we're talking about it. So that's really important. And there it is again. So let's just spend more money. How about that um, right now? So we'll do that here on Intel um, just because I'm not certain what this name wants to do. Let's put a piece out there, get something out in and around 80 and sort of call it a day here. Um, not call it a day, but just get another piece out for Intel. We only have half now of this position left for INTC. Okay, so we only have half left for Intel. We'll see if that um, makes any difference here or not, but Intel right now left with half uh, as we'll bid some lower bids on this name. I'm gonna cancel my Amazon bid, I'm gonna cancel my Apple bid, and just continue. We're pretty much near the same levels P&L wise that we I were yesterday. I still like Apple, Apple's strong. Yeah, that's what I mean, I just, sorry, I, meant, I didn't mean to cancel, I mean I have to like regroup because oh I haven't really had a chance to look. Like that AMD push down there when you said, oh my God, oh my God, I was like, what the hell? Um, and then, you know, I realized that once again, we just bounced off 168 again. And we didn't have any bids there, but this was only 168.70. So you could see the pushes are becoming more and more shallow on AMD. So that's something interesting. Maybe we go long 169-ish uh, right there in and around AMD. So let's see if that is a possibility there for a long 69 on AMD because at first it was 68 we missed. It only went to 68.20. Then I was waiting for that same level again. This time we went to 68.70, 68.80. And then there's the bump back up another buck 50. So uh, AMD is the only sort of scratch on here today where we didn't have like a really significant trade. Um, but we're gonna wait to see if that can continue to go. And look at this, what a surprise. As we stay bullish, with the bullish names. I mean, there goes Amazon. We're still on that one. The only mistake, and this was before you mentioned Meta there, I was gonna say, uh, we did have a VWAP retracement in Google that once again, we literally marked out on here, wait for VWAP dips uh, on Google on the sticky note, and we missed it there. Well, we didn't miss it there. The market was falling, and we were kind of nervous at that point. But right here, I feel like we could have had that second one because of this. Market not doing a whole heck of a lot. So um, again, you know, Trades will be easy to find when they're there and hard to find when you're looking for them. So stay patient. 
and um, something will show up. It's like a pot, like a wash pot never boils. Yes. Like if you stare, like that's sort of the thing, like the good trades are the ones that you do the work for to find the levels. The ones that you're like, oh, I just pull up a chart and it's like, oh, great. That's a, no, those are usually not the best. Those are like the reactionary setups and they're not always the best. So look, Intel's trying to hold VWAP, but it did this at the exactly the same time yesterday uh, the exactly the same time yesterday, like it punched VWAP and then made the lower high and then absolutely flush. So I want to give this one a chance, but you got to watch out. Like I got, I realized I got in here. It's like it didn't need the early fill, but it was an early position. And then I got this one in too early. And then when I got the better fills, only because I had relieved pressure off of VWAP. So let's see if this can't push down. The market's trying to hold a bid. Uh, Neo was the new entrant. And if it breaks 480, I'm out. Is there, do we have a throw? My earpiece might not be working. I didn't hear a throw. Okay. I, just want, I, wasn't, I wasn't sure. My I know. All, good, all good, all good, all uh, good. But uh, yeah, in just a few minutes, we're going to get Adara for the uh, small cap recap. Before we do, or maybe, she, I don't know if she's going to talk about this one, that DXYZ is well. consolidating. If you're trading this stock, it could, if it loses 70, it might halt down again. I just be careful with it. Very, very thin. Let's go to Adara now for the small cap recap. Keep an eye on here. Here's the IWM, kind of stagnant here, up about 0.35%. Trying to get a little bit back of a move back up here, though. So interesting look here for the Russell 2000. Names to keep an eye on include Acrivon Therapeutics, ACRV. This one up about 55% announcing $130 million private placement. So interesting look here for ACRV. We also have this uh, Biosig, BSGM. This one falling a little bit here, initially trading up over 100%. No news, but lots of social media interest and about 7 million share float for BCSG. Uh, or sorry, BSGM. We also have, last but not least, Railvision RVSN. This one also breaking down a bit here, uh, but it was up about 20% and holding very nicely, getting an order for its AI-powered switchyard system. And this one does have a float of about 2.65 million shares. About 9% of that is going to be short. So lots of short float names and low float names on watch here today, guys. No doubt about it. And Tesla is holding 178.79, the top of the channel here. I guess it doesn't seem to want that 180 as badly as I thought it did. So we might not get that top break. Well, sorry, that top break at 180. I was looking to fade into 181. VWAP sits at 176, so that would be a reasonable place to try to jump in. NVIDIA still refuses to break 850. It's obviously weak down that 2%. Just in Intel and BlackBerry. And NIO, okay, there's the break of the low for, for NVIDIA. It's about to take down this 850 level. SMCI has it broke 900 yet. About to take that down? Never mind. SMCI broke 900 without NVIDIA going. And it looks like that was, that was the break. So you talk yourself out of it. Uh, it. SMCI goes clean. It looks like about $7 on a 900 break. You know what? Who knows what price you get when that breaks anyways. Like you might not get it until like 898 or something, uh, which is not the best fill, I don't think. I mean, we're still putting money on the board with Intel, which is at least pretty nice uh, right here. So that's been a good trade so far here today. Um, but not, not much happening, but just as a little bit of like, if some of the pressure in some of these semis is a little bit too much for you uh, to handle, an Intel trade is pretty simple, man. I mean, just go short, play off these levels, and you'll be fine. As there, it comes right back in again. So starting to do some of that uh, for some Intel. Um, just because NVIDIA is going to break, I was debating this SMH trade again. We, it's too bad because we did miss it. it sh we should have been short up here in around 220, 250, something like that. I could um, take a short on this name. I was thinking about that. Let's just maybe start a little bit here underneath 223 for SMH. I just feel like we could... If, if NVIDIA goes, I mean, how low does this name go eventually? Pretty low, I would think. So we do have a short. I kind of was going to try to hold it against this, like, 22, 223.50 area. But that's 224. VWAP is all the way. 50. There it is. So there's the break right now. Okay, you have it. So we are now short on SMH. And here's another one, unfortunately, put on the board. SMH, um, another short. We'll take a little bit of profit here. But uh, nice play here on SMH. Yeah, so I got, what did I get? Really? Okay. Nice. 88? That seems impossible. Um, there's no way. That's almost like too good a fill. This, and it's actually a flat bottom break with a wick down here uh, the other day. So 840, I mean, 840 is a nice brown number. On the daily, that's also the next support level. So if you're station to station, then you think about the 840 level. Like if you're like Alejandro Kirk on the base paths, then you're thinking about the 840. 
And uh, he's like our catcher. And yeah. he's, he's a horrible base runner, and he yeah. can't. And pretty much uh, a horrible catcher. Actually, you know what? No. Uh, no? Daniel Vogelbach is actually the worst base runner on the team. Uh, so NVIDIA, the break was pretty clean. It's not $7 like SMCI was, but I promise you you're not getting slipped 80, 12 cents on, SM, on SMCI. You're getting slipped like a dollar or two. So NVIDIA does take out that low. Intel's holding at 70, which is baffling to me. It should be a lot weaker than this. But I'm thinking this move should take us to the 840. So the first push was to 48. So we took some out on that first push. Now I'm looking for the 840 level on the daily. As everything's coming to the downside, NIO is starting to flush uh, back into VWAP here. So we got, it wicked the top, came back under. I'm like, okay, we like it. So let's take that 76. What do I want Heavily. for NVIDIA for a trail? Probably the 45 level looking like the level for me. Load, there we go. Yeah, uh, huge, Video is still huge. going to the downside. So hold on to your shorts. Apple is at VWAP. That's the only thing, unless Google's looking good for you for a long, holding VWAP here is Apple temporarily. All right, uh, so big, big trades uh, happening right there. Good trade on that one, Neil. Good trade. SMH is now a dollar in the money as well as we just took that trade. So, um, yeah, lots. This is what I'm saying, man. You never know sometimes where that bread is buttered. But we have Adara over at the screen with something that's been ignored that just broke 70000 It's crypto. Coinbase. Yep. Oh, yeah. Yo, Adara? what's up, Fabian? Adara? No? What? We have note here on crypto arthur hayes former ceo and co-founder of bitmex here saying that he actually thinks that bitcoin the bitcoin having coming up speculatively dated on april 20th could actually lead to some weakness in bitcoin he's saying this in part because the rest most of the market is thinking this will be bullish so he says usually when that happens there could be a correction or some bearishness here for bitcoin also due to the fact that the timing of the U.S. tax payment date, very uh, very close to when the halving is going to be, could also lead to some liquidity issues in the Bitcoin market. So interesting stuff here. Also interesting, as Sean just uh, mentioned there, we do have BTC breaking below that 70,000. Uh, this is the daily candle, so we're giving up a lot of yesterday's gains here on this uh, red candle to the downside for BTC right now, down about almost 3%. We initially, we were at uh, just above, uh, I feel, it feels like five minutes ago, we were just above that 70,000 level. Now at about 69.7 here on BTC. Ethereum also weaker, this one stronger, holding it pretty well a little bit earlier today. Now at about uh, 3,500, just above. Pretty uh, mixed for a lot of these other crypto related names. Ripple up about 2%, Solana down about 4%. Dogecoin pretty weak here at about 5% to the downside and Cardano pretty much flat on the day. We are brought to you by Benzinga Pro. Sign up today for 50% off their premier news and research platform for retail traders with code TTV, capital letters. Use the link in the description to go to check out. I took 900 too. And right there, guys, we do have a new uh, leader there, Max. What? Shout out to Max, absolutely crushing that. A big shout out uh, to Mr. Max. So big ups uh, over there to Max on that one. Um, all right, so look at this SMH trade as well. Uh, I can't believe we... I should have been over there on NVIDIA. That is that is 100% my bad. Uh, but we still have this trade at least, which is now only a buck 50 in the money. But it is SMH as we start to make that move back in on this name as well. So again, big congratulations to everybody and anybody uh, that hit that. I know Neil had that. So good trade there. Uh, monster move on NVIDIA to the downside right there. And actually, SMH actually looks more dramatic, but NVIDIA just has been huge. Uh, lots of volume over there. Um, let's see what happens on that one. And then, of course, we put just back in the board as well. Shout out to my guy, Intel, right now, uh, as we'll say what's up to you, as that makes that move back in as well. And wow, um, what a day, what a market, what a month. Um, just congratulations to everybody so far here. Yeah, it's one of those, man. And uh, you didn't hit your flush one today. See, you don't use the flush one stocks tank. Which I think you you have to. When all stocks take no, 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 because like I use the flush for when stocks go down. You use the flush for when a position comes out. But at the same time, watch out for Intel. Like this thirty-seven fifty, somebody's buying it at this price, and you saw it already happen once. It's now doing it a second time here. So I've gotten the bulk of it out again. Uh, so if it gets to VWAP, it'll be another lower high. Just short the um, as a as a full-time trader. When I was a trainee said, when the market's trending down short the pops. Uh, so that's what we did with Intel. I'm back, I have one trade on Google, which was buying it 156.40, so a lower high here. If it gets to VWAP, I'm gonna take some out. This market's a little bit weak. To be getting too crazy with the long trades. Nvidia was insanity at 840. 
just for anyone that was following that, like it wicked 840, went to $834, and you blinked, and it was back where you snapped your fingers. I said blink and snapped my fingers. Yep. Uh, and then it was right back to 840. So if you're if you're trailing to that, like that was like a really, really fast trail out. Uh, so 850 down to the 840 level. If it if it comes back in, maybe we get another chance at that 850. Uh, NIO, which is not really doing a heck of a lot of anything, it's about three cents in the money, uh, so we'll cross that bridge, and BlackBerry not doing much. Uh, the 200 period on NVIDIA, I only use the 50 and the 200 on my daily chart, so um, you'd have to, I mean, Sean has the 200, I think, you can probably say where NVIDIA's 200 period is on your three or five minute chart. I don't have it up on that chart. I'm not even looking at it, but yeah, um, yeah, NVIDIA, I mean, look, I've, we were, you asked me this question yesterday, and I was like, what am I buying on dips? And I was like, NVIDIA, NVIDIA, and more NVIDIA. Well, it was so, more, what do you prefer um, to buy? Not, right, exactly. You so can't right guess now. what you're going to buy first. So like, what do you want to buy the most? That's all. Yeah, so NVIDIA was the answer there. And I think that we are uh, getting pretty close. So, uh, But here on the daily chart, though, for NVIDIA, we do have uh, quite a ways to fall in. I mean, that 810 area would be something, I think, uh, for a level of potential concern uh, at some point there. So that could be a level that we look at for NVIDIA coming through. But for right now, I mean, you are trying to break. And this might be a decent level to reload something there. Its high is 970 today, um, and its low is 84. It's not today of the most recent month, I guess, uh, this all-time high, 973, as you can see right there, 974, pulling back into 840 right now. So that's 130 bucks. So you're, you know, you're getting a nice little level here for NVIDIA down now about 12 or 13 uh, percent now from its highs. So I like that play there uh, to continue with a uh, short on NVIDIA until we get in and around that 815, 810 mark. So I think that's where we'll probably start to load that up. Um, we've just been really light here on Amazon, looking to buy some more. Uh, we still have that little small piece. We told you about 15% of it. So we've been sort of ignoring that because we were looking at our SMH. And honestly, the, I mean, what's being done on SMH uh, pales in this. But uh, we will just continue to look where we should be looking because that's what traders should do. Amazon down here, 185. Looks like a pretty good opportunity for me uh, to start to buy something there. But we did break VWAP, um, so that should have been definitely a concern. So we're gonna have to look at that down into 185.50 for Amazon. That's sort of my next target to look at on that name. So that, that's, that's a trade that I'm looking at. And then we continue to move, make moves lower here. As there goes SMH, damn, Daniel, like what is even going on uh, right now in some of these names as we continue to go lower here um, on the SMH and Yuckety on the overall market uh, right now. So there it goes, man. Here's $2, so back to back uh, right there. It doesn't really matter. Neil hit that with NVIDIA. We got this with SMH and with Intel, by the way. So that's a double shot right there. And then Google could be the one that we, that we eventually go long on. Let's let this market settle down. I don't think we'll be going long until I see some, some sort of a turnaround in this behemoth over here, the SMH. I just scalped that. Like the bounce on Google was 50 to 90. And I just took some out there because it's looking very, very heavy on the market. And I don't, I don't even see a reload. I think you'll wait for it. Even the pre-market lows at 155 could come into play. As I say that, I didn't even adjust my stop to, to a tighter stop. So I'm going to go ahead and do that uh, right now. So just going to get it underneath this consolidation instead of giving it to the open range lows. Uh, BlackBerry is looking okay. Intel still at 37.50. Neo. I'm looking for VWAP wow. <laughs> here on NIO. It got halfway there. I got a bid out in front. And then if it cracks through, I got one out in 462. Uh, everything is cracking. What's Coinbase doing? Is there anything available in Coinbase? Probably not. 69.5, no. by the way. Yeah, because 70,000 already went. Coinbase is at 243. So the 50 level was good. The 50 level, you're not getting a short off of 50 unless you're swinging it for, for a couple of days. Uh, the, the sky is not necessarily falling, but the shorts are what's working. I just saw in the chat, like, Finch Jane saying the sky's falling. NASDAQ's down 0.4%. So individual names, like Coinbase down 5%, NVIDIA down 4%. What is AMD doing? Only 1% down for AMD. Yeah, that's why we had that as the long today, but... You know what? AMD's got this 165 support level the last couple of days because it had that <laughs> huge flush on Kashkari Day. Oh, yeah, Kashkari. And it's got the 165. That's why AMD... By the way, I don't believe that was Kashkari at all, but I know people are calling no, it No, I'm that. only saying it that because at the time it moved, he was, he was talking, and I like talking yeah, yeah, trash yeah. about Neil Kashkari because oh, right, right, he right, spells right. his name K-N-E-E-L. 
That well, was more, um, that, not, that yeah. particular move, no, no, I know, we, yeah. There was some, there was some. Is, yeah, that was geopolitical. It was geopolitical. Yeah, 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 but Kashkari was talking. That was one of those That was with a KN. Where all, 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 all of them were rolling out um, speakers, like, left, right, and center that day. Well, the reason you uh, know it had something to do with geopolitical is because 50. all the tech just got destroyed, and everything defense-related was running to the upside that afternoon. It was, there was that headline. Right, so. Um, yeah. Yeah. Uh, all right, uh, we're going to get out of this if it breaks up above 221.50. Let's just ring the register again, man. We're, out, we're almost out of here. It's 10.40 right now. If we can get back upside, I think there's upside in the market. I mean, I don't think the market's only, like Neil was mentioning, only down 0.3. So we're not necessarily down that much here today. So let's just continue with uh, sort of the plan of action here. Get out when we see fit. Put some money in the bank. And are we ready? And let's go over to Adara at the big screen. Much like the market, a lot of these sectors mix. Some of them getting a little bit weaker. Finance here, as we know, uh, some of these major banks reporting the end of this week, beginning of next week. So this sector on watch right now, pretty weak here. Health technology is an interesting one. Pfizer and Moderna, both very strong here. Positive catalyst with Moderna with regards to some trial data and fi uh, with Pfizer, Pfizer, sorry, with regards to some data. Moderna, very strong with some social media attention, up over 8%. Whereas we have some names like Lilly and Abby, a little bit more weak. Lots of weakness here as well in consumer services, uh, producer manufacturing. Commercial services is pretty weak as well. MasterCard announcing some kind of uh, strategic organization. So MA, certainly one to keep an eye on. Then we have some sectors like consumer non-durables, retail trade, which have a couple positive names, but a lot of these pretty flat. So overall, very mixed bag for a lot of these sectors heading into the rest of the day, guys. Uh, all right, 16880, 169. Okay, I was just looking here at Apple. So we are out of our SMH. Let's just put a wrap on that one, bow that one up, hit the cash register again for about a buck fifty on that trade. So we're pretty happy, needless to say, uh, about that one. So good, good, good to go on that. Um, Intel, we did take another fill there. Again, we we might have slipped up on that SMH. It may be heading a lot lower, but we got to have some sort of targets or else um, we are forever uh, going to lose. So right there, Intel, another piece out on that basement there. So good trade uh, happening for that one. The trade that I was interested in was one that, again, we talked about it being relatively strong uh, here today, but Apple is falling in into some of these levels one more time as this market looks like it wants to break. Um, Apple coming in. I feel like this, ah, darn you, SMH, darn you, SMH, darn you. SMH, um, as it's falling back in one more time now. But again, stick to your rules and uh, you'll forever be um, responsible for your trades. That's the best part about it. If you know your ins and you know your outs, then you can correct your mistakes. Um, all right, so here we go. Intel downside, so that's fine. We'll still hold on to that one. Um, the call was Apple. It was buying something in and around here. I feel like this is a decent spot. Let's get something in. We are at the 200 period. Neil was mentioning that before. I don't necessarily think that we need to buy off of that. Let's just buy some strength in Apple. We'll punch 81s there. Or what did we get? 82s. We tried to buy dips, but here it comes. Maybe we will. My, my out on this is probably this break of 40. That day's low right there for Apple is my out. So let's wait to see if that out is going to hit or not. But for right now, it's Apple time. And we're going to go... Uh, we're going to go long here on Apple. So let's wait to see against 168.40. So I, I just got out oh, of man, Google and I'm is. looking for the low of the day here. Sorry, check that. I'm looking for the low of the opening range. The, the low of the pre-market is like $2 away. But I, I said consolidation was looking good. I want 156 or 155.8. I want to wait a little bit lower. As Intel's just broken that bottom, if Intel can't hold this 37.5, oh, I think we can see the quarter... And if we continue to trend, the 37 even. So I'm going to get a bid out in front of the quarter. Neil's still not doing much. Oh, yeah, if you happen to be looking at BlackBerry, it just got back up to VWAP. I don't think this is a reload up there. You should be, if the market's falling apart, this should be falling apart. I don't need to be adding to it if somehow magically BlackBerry is catching a bid. So I'm going to get off of the offer and put a couple more. I just put another bid in there um, at 307 to see if we can get something out in front of three. But I waited and waiting for Google to get down, and it's at 56. So got out at 40, and I'm going to try to get back in off of the opening range low. That's 155.8 on Alphabet. There's not much I like. I mean, Google and uh, Apple are okay because they're still in front of the support levels, but that can't.
can't last forever if this market decides to give it all up. Uh, not at all. And, um, poof. Wow, we are still. Let's just check the breath here. Oh, so I did take some Amazon against 185. That comes out, that comes out, man. Amazon is now red. Uh, but this was another name that we had looked at for a minute down here into 185. So um, looks like it wants to break it. We'll give it a minute after that, but not too much longer. Apple is the other sort of hope and pray that something holds. Uh, but we already talked about this market down at 18.2. I can't believe how we're nailing some of these futures. We wrote down on the sticky note, watch out for 18.4, like literally exactly what we said. And that was the top of all tops. Like we just are down now 220 handles from there. So right down into 18.2. So now we got to look at this level, 18.125 maybe for something. But yeah, we are continuing to fall down here, um, including Amazon. Oops, here, go back over to it. My bad. Uh, Amazon looks like it wants to break. There is the break through 185. I told you we're going to give it a little bit, but it is breaking lower here. Amazon not really treating us too well on that move. But what is, is this one right now. So let's go, man. Let's get that energy back upside right now as Apple. So making on Apple, losing on Amazon, such is life uh, right now. But again, Apple, nice, strong, long uh, there at that bottom. Yes, sir. Um, let's see if it can continue to hold. It's not even like it's ripping up. It's not doing anything, to be honest with you. We'll put an offer up at 169. See if we can get that. Something in the 80s. Something a little bit as we try to bottom pick a little bit. That's all we're trying to do. Trying to bottom pick. Trying to see if we can get some value uh, to come through here for the plays. So that's what I'm looking at right now. Uh, are you still staying that short? Yeah. I, know I got well. Google, Google, Apple. I mean, look. I havenven't even looked at Meta, so I don't know what Meta or Microsoft oh, are doing. But Apple got out at 40s, and I'm like, okay, I'll get back in off of this low. This. So I grabbed some even, Look at Amazon. getting some 20s. If it gets to VWAP in the 157, I think I'm just going to be able to take this one out and be happy for the bounce. NVIDIA is starting to turn. This is going to be good for the market. Oh, it's yeah. going to be good for longs if NVIDIA holds 835. Because that was the, that was the, the straw that broke the candles. Camel's back, candle's back. It broke the oh, back. Wee. Now we're getting a nice little bounce in here. I only liked Google, so we made sure we took that one. And now you're getting, it's about a 50 cent bounce. Yeah, Compared nice. to the shorts, you'll take it. But I'm not convinced that this, oh, is no. a, this is a reverse of the overall trend. So take the money on this, but the trend is still to the downside. Like you, you got the NASDAQ, if it pops, you have resistance from yesterday, so support from yesterday and this morning that could turn to resistance at 1825. So that's what I'd be worried about here, is if it doesn't break through that, you get another leg to the downside, and this turns into a bit of a weaker day uh, than anticipated. Remember, CPI tomorrow too, so you could have some positioning going into that. Uh, yeah. Wow, everybody. Wow. Props up to everybody uh, in and around there, man. Wow. Um, Intel continues to fall down. Look at Amazon, man, off of 185. We just got 185.35 or something like that um, on that upside of Amazon 28, sorry, um, as it's right here right now. Apple blasting as well. We got that 85 print that we wanted. So, I mean, this is what's happening uh, here one more time. So, again, just thanks everybody for watching. Hit the like, hit the subscribe, and what's up, Adara? Money talks in a couple minutes. Right now, though, just keep an eye on TSLA here, Tesla. Bloomberg reporting that the president of Argentina is, uh, according to a spokesperson, set to visit the Tesla factory in the U.S. and meet with Elon Musk this week. So keep an eye on TSLA with regards to that report from Bloomberg, guys. Tesla's at VWAP. Uh, Eugene Tam asking in the chat, is, is any news driving the market? No, not really. Um, this is, it feels like a bit of a technical break, and then you had like, I feel like when you get two stocks like NVIDIA and SMCI and then a couple of other chip names and they're breaking support at the same time, sometimes it's just like that. And you get technical moves and the floodgates open up, especially when everyone's getting a little bit antsy about market correction and pullback and all that nonsense. And that's exactly what happened. Like you saw, you had some strength in the market in the Apples and Googles of the world. And when NVIDIA... When NVIDIA really started cracking down, everything just started to go at that point. If NVIDIA can't hold 850, that's a bit of a problem. Tesla's holding VWAP, like I mentioned. So there it is, 176 and a half. This could be something, but the market does not 
want to bounce. I still don't have a red candle on the 15, sorry, a green candle on the 15 minute since Nvidia made that break. And I don't want to be jumping into a long unless I see something really clear. Like Google, we've been trading. I already took a couple legs out here into 165 and a half off the 156. So it's about a 50 cent move. And that's all we got the first time. That's all we got on the second bounce. But I'm keeping it specific. Play the bounce, take the range. If it breaks down, get the heck out of Dodge because this is trend to the downside. Like, I don't want to find myself, like, get long here, and then I'm going long into that. Just take the second long, and if I have to take a third one, it's down at 155. Uh, hamster, yeah, I know volatility is getting up. VIX isn't that high. VIX under 28. Nothing. I can't believe. VIX gets to 30, and we can talk. VIX gets to 30. But I, I feel like um, old traders say that all the time. VIX gets to 30, yeah, it won't, and we it can won't talk. get that high. Uh, okay, I mean, SMH, man, out, out a dollar ago, so definitely, wow, uh, mistake on that one. We did take another piece out on Intel here at 50. Let's see if that keeps on going down uh, right now again. But Intel continuously making lows. I mean, it's not making lows, but it's at its low right now. Um, keynote speech coming up right now. Pat Gelsinger at 11.30, um, some kind of a speech where he's going to say blah, 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 AI, Foundry, I need a couple more Bs in here before we can find. Don't give the Bs to TSM. Give them to us. That's yeah, I'd rather. I think they should give them to TSM, to be honest with you. Yeah, but uh, they are. That's, I know. That's, that's what I'm saying. I think that's thing. a better move, maybe. They are. Uh, and Samsung got money, too. Yep. Yeah, yeah. They're all getting money. A little bit of money for you, a little bit of money for me, and a little bit of money for us over here. So we'll face slap it out one more time as, yeah, man, the leaderboard is a plenty today. And I was saying yesterday, there wasn't too many uh, green traders on the floor today. There's not too many red traders on the floor. So we'll props it up to all the boys behind us and the girls. Um, great trading there today. So shout out to everybody there. Um, Okay, what's up to Ozan saying, Sean, with a Y, can you kindly send Tesla to the moon? Okay, here we go. We have something for that. Let's go. Get Tesla. Let's go right now. There it goes uh, as it's going to the moon. Oh, no, that's AMC. we got to change that. Well, you know what? We should have the ability to change it on the fly now with AI. Uh, we should be able to do that. What so, about that? Um, Is that okay? That's okay. Yeah, we put like a little Tesla logo on the there. Um, Tesla's doing itself a favor of mooning right now. It's up 2%, which honestly, Ozan and company, with a NASDAQ down 0.58, um, that is a nice move for Tesla being up two and a bit percent. But you might have just nailed this right now, and that's why we talk about money, money, money with our viewers, because again, Ozan, real see real. And what I'm seeing right now with you is 100% a trade that I don't mind one bit. That is a long right around here as Tesla trying to hold this bottom of 176. Good look there by Ozan in the chat for our friend, my friend, and your friend, Tesla. But all of us and Mr. Elon Musk, which poor Bob Iger, I mean, what are those two going to do? They have to kiss and make up uh, at some point, and I'm sure they will not do that. But over to the desk right now, and after this, we'll have lunchtime for everybody. But for right now, it's Adara with Money Talks. The XY virtually flat on the day here, currently hanging out around that 104.10 area. We did have this wick down into almost 103.80. 80s. So we were weaker, but we have recovered a little bit to basically trade flat on the day. Not a lot of economic data propelling us today at all, but we do have tomorrow the PPI print coming at 8.30 a.m. We also have a slew of Fed speakers tomorrow. Bowman at 8.45. Ghouls be at 12.45. Then we get those FOMC minutes tomorrow at 2 p.m. So lots of catalysts. They could be driving the DXY tomorrow. Then on Thursday, of course, as well, we do have the, the PPI number to keep an eye on and some more Fed speak. So a lot of these potential motivators and catalysts for the market and the DXY going to be coming a bit later in the week, hence the, the flat trading for this one right now, guys. So uh, the other mention, we mentioned this yesterday with the Tesla news, and I don't think we did today. If we did, I forgot. I missed it. Uh, Uber is breaking through the low. That was the other side of the robo taxi, uh, robo -taxi yeah. stuff here. Look at this market. Is that Uber could be under some pressure? And look, I own some Uber shares, and I haven't take, I haven't done anything except taking a little bit out on the S and P 500 um, uh, sell the news event. It just took out support, or is taking out support on the daily at 73 and a half, and it's underneath the 50 period moving average. I, if the market continues to trend down. Into, into VWAP in yesterday's low, I think it's a look to short the pops. The only long I have on right now is going to be, is it 10.53 already? Wow. Yeah. Uh, is is going to be this Google. 
And if it can't hold the opening range bottom, I'm going to get out of Dodge and look back into afternoon support, which is all the way down at 154, maybe a 155. And my earpiece just went again. Uh, so Google's holding on a little bit here. But if it breaks, I'm going to give it up. Thankfully, somehow we've managed to go into only longs on Google and win. But if it can't hold this double bottom, and you just got to be able to get out. I was asked what my stop was on NEO. I think I said 480 on the daily chart, and 480 is a high. Sorry, 79 is a high. I'll get out there if I can. But a couple of legs out in front of 470 is it's not really flushing like everything else. Why? Because Chinese ADRs are strong and Tesla is strong. So while this is working, acknowledging that, oh, never mind, Tesla's breaking support here. So uh, that, ho that doesn't hold VWAP. That could help me a little bit if even the EVs start to come to the downside. But the Chinese ADRs don't always tend to care. And somehow BlackBerry oh, is geez. holding VWAP. So we're holding in the money here. Intel, I did the same thing as you, and it's like, why even get out at the low again? Because Intel then just proceeded to break the low. It was, it was actually the first thing we shorted, and then we shorted it back into VWAP, and now it feels like all roads are headed to 37 even. NVIDIA is at the low, SMCI is probably at the low at 880, Intel's at the low. AMD, is there a single chip name that's not breaking the low of the day right now? Which one of these is actually strong? My Micron's at 121. Yikes. Yeah, Google's not going to hold up. Good luck with that. I'm not reloading this here. If it breaks this low, I'm just going to jump out of Google. Wow. Wow. Yeah, wow is right. I mean, some of these levels just continue to go, 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 yeah. go. I mean, um, all right, so we are, I, man, that, um, that SMH trade, guys, wow. We nailed that one, just like that NVIDIA trade as well. But you can see right there, SMH just starting to break down, and we've been really hitting this. Um, some different ETFs as of late. We really like those, man, the TQs, this SMH trade uh, as well. And again, it just sort of takes away some of the exposure of single stock risk. Uh, but look at NVIDIA. I mean, you want to talk about the trade of the day. Uh, uh, for anybody probably today, would have been that NVIDIA long. Uh, uh, sorry, short, long. Um, short. Oh, yeah. Hello. Uh, or a long off of 830. So get ready to go. What, what, what no, just look happened to you? No, look what's up 2% and holding. No, someone put in the oh, chat Pan there w? that Pan W is holding up pretty well. I like that because what that means is Pan W bounced off 260 and is currently making higher lows, even with the flushing market. Why does that matter? Because when it got destroyed on earnings, 260 was a bottom. If they can hold it and get back above 280, I like it. I like it. Actually, I meant to be adding to this, and I was going to wait for 230s or next Q sometime in this, well, in this quarter, I suppose. I might just go into the 260s again. So first buy for me was at that 260 level on Penn W in a very long time. Uh, Google did not stop out yet. So I know I keep saying that I'm going to stop out on Alphabet, but it doesn't seem to actually want to break down here. I'm not reloading at this price but it actually has not stopped me out just yet on Alphabet. So we're going to hang on to the shorts. If Alphabet can hold here, then maybe we do get a VWAP retracement, and then fantastic. Uh, Tobias saying, look at Reddit. Sure. Uh, Looks like pretty much everything else. Maybe a flat bottom break, but you know, I'm going to stay away from this. Everything else, the chip names have been working for us here. And so I'm going to look for some kind of a bounce either in Google. Maybe you get something on like an Apple. Uh, but hold on to the shorts for now because it's, that's what the market's telling me to do. Yeah, Amazon is a nice 40 cent winner. Long, but we have to wait to see what's for lunch today because yesterday was pretty good. Although I didn't have really any of this uh, jerk chicken. I found like, uh, well, actually I did have a small piece there. A little, little too much cinnamon, I thought. Me and BPI talked about that a little bit. Um, and I think Yannick as well. Uh, but today, again, you know, if you like chicken, most of the time, you're pretty happy with what happens around here because we do put on, not only if you're trading, sometimes you get chicken dinner winners, uh, as you can see right there. But for right now, today's, you also would like to have some citrus in your life. So today is grilled citrus glazed breast of chicken with steamed basmati rice and vegetables. So I would say that's not bad. That's not bad for a lunch. You know, we'll take that. We'll take it. I... Uh, I'll hope for some. My wife made this kick-ass egg salad in these um, with uh, avocado and things like that last night. That was really kick-ass uh, yeah, as well yesterday. for the um, lunch wrap. Uh, no, yesterday we had eggs and we had potatoes. Oh, it was. Yeah, no, you're right. It was. Oh, that's right. It was like this. Uh, the, yeah. 
Yeah, yeah, it's all right. It's all right. I got you. Um, but uh, Amazon right now, 50 cents of the money. As We'll see if we can have some diamond hands for Amazon. Shout out to my guy, Obi, as I see him uh, in the back there as well. We will end the damn day at our highest spot. So right there, man, it was another one after another one after another one here today. And I hope that you can enjoy. I, I just hope you can enjoy the midday show a lot more than you enjoyed this show. Because the midday show is our Pop flagship show now. Um, that's right. That's right, Sharif. It's our number one show coming up very, very soon. What do you got today? In one minute. Um, how to drink coffee out of a straw today is what's coming through. Now, that is... That I is, know. It's, it's I nuanced. Drinking, out right. of, drinking coffee out it's, of a straw it's takes... It's the hype shit. It takes skill. It takes precision. It takes a heck of a lot of um, self-confidence as well. So... <laughs> No, we're just joking around. Um, it's whatever. There's a reason he gave that's uh, Invisalign. I, I'm not drinking that out of the straw. However, we are drinking in a fantastic market today, which is giving you lots of volatility back and forth. Google's going to hold out. I'm getting another. Look, it's a bull flag on these uh, Chinese ADRs, or specifically, you know what, the EVs, because I actually don't know what the, ADR, the other ADRs are doing. Uh, so I'm going to get some out here on that 70 at Neo, so it's holding VWAP. If it breaks VWAP, we wait for 460, but I'm just gonna make the adjustment there on NIO, as that looks a little bit stronger. And XPEV as well, we got it, we did get a super chat from Dominic, um, just basically all he said was XPeng. And XPeng stronger than Neo, but it is up 10% and holding these highs. So be careful, like I'm short it, but I'm taking some out there because the only thing holding up and not threatening lows that I can see uh, looks like these Chinese EV names, or at least Xpeng and Neo. I don't know what Lee Auto's doing. Uh, market trying to make lows here right now on the at NASDAQ and the ES. We just bounced off 5,200. We are bouncing off of 18 to two levels that we talk about all of the damn time. But I want to thank everybody. I want to thank Gary there in the chat. I want to thank everybody for all of your kind words. Uh, we put a lot of effort into this show, and I'm glad that it was enjoyable for you as well. So uh, thanks to everybody behind us. Thanks, Brankles, everybody uh, in there behind us. Thanks to the boys and girls that are trading uh, there. And thanks to everybody for watching. Thanks, Fabian, for working his you-know-what off there as a one-man gang uh, in the back. So shout out uh, to Fabian. Shout out to Neil. A good trade there on NVIDIA. And yes, without any further ado. Shout out to North Carolina Blue. And I just realized I like that shirt, actually. Yeah, thanks. And a shout out to UConn, actually. Remember? I mean, they took that down yesterday uh, against our guy, Mr. Edie from Toronto. He's, he'll go in the second round. Uh, will he? Yeah, he'll get picked uh, in the second round. Uh, you know what I think it's going to be? For him, it's going to be about some of those camps. Like, does he have the conditioning? He's 7-4. You know? Someone yeah. will take him. Yeah, yeah. He'll, he'll, yeah somebody yeah. will take him late. Yeah, he'll, he'll get, get even the Raptors. I mean, we have, like, five second-round picks. I think, actually, we started to trade some of those. I, I don't even know anymore. But anyway, Zach Eady, welcome to maybe Raptor don't land. Don't get me started on the Raptors. At some point. Well, you know what? The thing about the Raptors is R.J. Barrett missed a bunch of time. And top 20 player in the NBA, Scotty Barnes, unfortunately hurt. Um, about about a month ago and on the yeah. shelf for the year, so not much we can do next with year. that one. Next year. next year is our year. Okay, let's go get him. Yeah, let's go get him on the midday show. Yes, it's a Dara. It's the handsome Sharif. Look at that shirt. Who did this? Over to the midday show. Let's go get him. What is up, beautiful people? Welcome to How to Trade, formerly known as the Midday Show. That is your girl, Adara, and I'm Sharif, and we're gonna wait for everyone to come on over from the other stream. I think we're having a little bit of issues. Uh, I could